is all praise to the most high again tonight's topic is called leadership for dummies leadership for dummies so one thing that we need to understand is that in israel we lack leadership okay the most high god has given us this bible to raise up leaders this day you understand so we can be able to wake up our people and lead the nation in righteousness okay watch this give me the book of proverbs give me proverbs chapter 14 okay proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34 proverbs 14 okay let's start there proverbs chapter 14 verse 34 read that proverbs chapter 14 verse 34 go ahead righteousness exalteth the nation mm -hmm. but sin is a reproach to any people you see what the lord is saying it says righteousness exalts a nation Okay, but sin is a reproach to any people. Watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 1 and 6. Let's understand what, is right, what righteousness is. Because it says righteousness exalted a nation. Watch this. Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Let's read that. Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Come on. And they were both righteous before God, mm -hmm. walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. So now that's how we're going to be able to, our nation as, as a whole, the 12 tribes of Israel, this is how we are going to be exalted above all nations on earth, through righteousness, not through deceit, wickedness, backstabbing, evil speech, no. Righteousness, keeping of God's laws, that's how our nation is going to be exalted above all nations on earth. Go back to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34 again. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Go ahead. Righteousness exalted the nation. Mm -hmm. but sin is a reproach to any people but sin is a reproach to any people give me that in first john chapter three and four let's see what sin is that is a reproach to any people because right now as a nation we're a reproach why first john three and four read that first john chapter three verse four come on whosoever committed sin transgresseth mm -hmm. also the law come on for sin is the transgression of the law so sin is the breaking of God's laws. Go back to Proverbs now. Chapter 14, verse 34 again. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Righteousness exalts the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. But the breaking of God's laws is the reason why we are a reproach to all the nations on earth. You understand? So this is the keys to the kingdom right here. This is the key to, to be rulers of the earth. Because we are the rulers of the earth. But the reason why we fell is because we sin. Now we are a reproach to all these nations that are ruling over us this day. Watch this. Give me Sirach 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. Watch this. Sirach 10, verse 8. Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha, chapter 10, verse 8. Read that. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. Read. Beware that thou be not deceived. No, no. No, no, no. Come on. Sirach 10, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. Come on. Because of unrighteous dealings. Because of what? Injuries. Because of unrighteous dealings. Because of unrighteous dealing. Unrighteous dealings. Okay. Come on. Injuries. Mm-hmm. And riches got by deceit. You see that thing? Deceit. Unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches that were gotten by deceit. Okay, fraud. You understand? Read. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. You see that? You see how we lost the kingdom? We lost the kingdom because of what? We lost the kingdom because of unrighteous dealings. Watch this. Give me the book of First John. Okay, give me First John 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 17. Let's read that. 1 John 5, verse 17. 1 John chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. All unrighteousness is sin. Mm -hmm. You see that part and right there? All unrighteousness. All unrighteousness is sin. We know what sin is, the breaking of God's laws. So go back to Sirach 10, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. Read. Because of unrighteous dealings. Because injuries, of what? Because of, hold on. 
because of unrighteous dealings. We understand what unrighteousness is. The break is sin, the breaking of God's laws. So because of sin, you understand? Because of sin, the kingdom was translated from us to the heathens. Now the heathens are ruling over us now. You understand? Give me that in 2nd Esdras. Okay, 2nd Esdras chapter 6. 2nd Esdras chapter 6. Okay. 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 57. Watch this. 2nd Ezra 6 verse 57. Come on. 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 57. Great. And now, O Lord, behold, mm. these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, Come have on. begun to be lords over us mm -hmm. and to devour us. You see what he's saying? He says, now these heathen, these heathens now, that because the heathens are ruling over us now. Because of what? Because of unrighteous dealings. You understand? They've got, he says, have ever been reputed as nothing. Meaning these other nations, they have a reputation as being nothing on this earth when it comes to us, compared to us. You understand? He says, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Now they are lords over us now. You understand? They are lords over us. Because of what? Because of unrighteous dealings. Because of breaking God's commandments, these heathens now, they are ruling over us. You understand? Go back to Proverbs now. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34 again. Because King Solomon is explaining to, is, is explaining to us how we lost the kingdom. Because of what? Because of sin. Unrighteous dealings. Go back to where he was at. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Come on. Righteousness exalted the nation, mm -hmm. but sin is a reproach to any people. But sin is a reproach to any people. Now, right now, we're a reproach to all the heathens that are, that are lords over us. Why? Because of sin. You understand? The reason why we're a reproach to the heathens is because we are breaking the laws of the Most High God. So before we can deal with these nations that are lords over us, that are devouring us, the first thing we must do is what? Give me that in Psalms. Okay, give me Psalms 50 verse 21. Watch this. Before we can deal with these nations, this is the first thing that we must do. Okay, watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 50 verse 21. Go ahead. These things hast thou done, mm -hmm. and I kept silence. Meaning what? These things the white man has done, meaning what? They kill, they rob, they murder, they rape, they stole. They are oppressing us with much wicked oppression in these last days. From the time they took over during 1453 in the, during the Renaissance period up to this day. You understand? They've done much evil unto us. Read that part again. Psalms chapter 50 verse 21. Come on. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. So the things, the evils they've done to us, the Lord says he kept silent. You understand? And the reason why they kept, they, 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 are so, they are so bold in doing what they are doing is because the Lord has kept silence since they've been doing these evil things. So now they think they are one with the Lord. Go ahead. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such and one as thyself. Read. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, he's going to set us in order before the eyes of these heathens. That's what the Lord is saying. The most High God says, he's going to set us in order before these nations. You understand? He's going to do that thing. So before we can deal with these nations, we must first deal with ourselves. We must first deal with our nation. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 21, verse 27. Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus. Okay, Sirach chapter 21, verse 27. Watch this. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verse 27. Come on. When the ungodly cursed Satan, he cursed his own soul. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, when the ungodly cursed Satan, he cursed his own soul. It's one thing to, 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 to check the white man that he's the devil the Bible speaks of because he is the devil the Bible speaks of. But guess what? We must what? We must set our nation in order. That's the main thing. We must get ourselves together. And the way we get ourselves together, we keep God's commandments, you understand? As we keeping God's commandments, 
Guess what happens? Guess what? These nations, particularly the white men and all the people that support him in his kingdom, watch this. Give me the book of Revelation, okay? Revelation chapter... Um, Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17. Watch this. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17. Come on. And, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. So the dragon is the white man. The woman is the 12 tribes of Israel. So the dragon is the white man. The woman is us. Go ahead. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Mm -hmm. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's us. Come on. Which kept the which keep the commandments of God. And have the testimony of Jesus. So now I have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Read that verse again. Read verse 17 again. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17. Read. And the dragon was wrath with the women. And went to make war with the remnants of her seed. Read. Which keep the commandments of God. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see that thing? So the other nations, particularly starting with the white man and the rest of his allies. It says they are wrath with the women. The only time when they are going to be angry with us is not when we are cursing them out. No, is when we keep the commandments of the Mosai and the testimony of Jesus Christ. When we do that, that's when the the nations are going to be angry because guess what we are doing? Keeping the commandments of the Mosai God in the faith of his son, the Messiah. That's the only time when the nations, we're going to put fear in the nations when when we keep God's commandments, when we truly become the leaders of this earth by taking hold of this Bible and applying what's written in it. You understand? That's how we are going to be exalted above these nations through righteousness, through our righteous dealings with one another. You understand? And our righteous dealings in the sight of the Most High God. That's how we're going to be exalted above these nations. That's how when we will truly become the leaders of the earth. Watch this. But before we can lead the nation of Israel, we must first deal with ourselves. You understand? So tonight I'm going to be dealing with the men. Okay, watch this. These, now we're going to deal with the characteristics of leadership. Okay? Leadership for dummies. The first person that you must lead is yourself. Understand that? Self-examination. That's the first thing you must do. Write that down. We're going to deal with different points. Self-examination. Self-leadership. You must lead yourself. That's the first person you must lead is yourself. Give me that in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Read. Examine yourselves. Do what? Examine yourselves. No, examine your neighbor. Examine yourselves. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. So the first person that you must lead is yourself through self-examination. You must examine yourself first. Before you can go out and teach the nation, you must first lead yourself. Know how to lead yourself. Know how to examine and get rid of the things that you know they are going to be a hindrance to your progress. You understand? Read that again. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Mm-hmm. Examine yourselves. Come on. Whether you be in the faith. Whether you be in the faith, meaning the faith in Christ. Okay, come on. Prove your own selves. Read. Know ye not your own selves. Come on. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except mm-hmm. ye be reprobates. So now the Apostle Paul is teaching us, he says, prove your own selves. How do you prove your own self? You examine yourself according to this Bible. You look at your life. You look at what the Bible says about your life. And the things that are wrong about you are in your life. What the Bible says, your job is to sit down and examine those things and get rid of those things so you can be better prepared to lead and teach your nation. You understand? It says, know you not your own selves. Everybody knows themselves. You understand? And the first, the, uh, one, of the main, one of the main characteristics of leadership is you knowing yourselves, you knowing your shortcomings. You must know the things that, you are, that are lacking in you so that you can begin to go into the Bible and fix those things. You understand? Read that again, verse 5. 
Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Read. Examine yourselves, mm -hmm. whether ye be in the faith. Come Prove on. your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Except ye be reprobate. Now watch this, meaning void of judgment. Come on. Watch this now. Give me Matthew 7, verse 1. So before you can deal with your nation, you must first deal with yourself. Because some people, they, they cannot deal with themselves. So if you cannot deal with yourself, how are you going to be able to deal with the nation of Israel? You will not be able to do it. You understand? Watch this. Matthew 7, verse 1. We're going to start there. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 1. Come on. Judge not that ye be not judged. He says, judge not that ye be not judged. Because this is one of the scriptures that uh, is used in the Christian church. You understand? So that they don't get corrected by what this Bible is saying. But Christ is going to explain what this, what, what, is, what he's talking about here. You understand? The Bible is not saying don't judge. The Bible only says don't judge in hypocrisy. That's the only, that's the lesson that Christ is going to give us here. Read that again, verse 1. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Come on. Judge not that ye be not judged. Read. For with what judgment ye judge, mm -hmm. ye shall be judged. Come on. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So now the Lord is saying, for what, for with what, whatever judgment you're going to judge with, he says, you shall be judged by the same judgment if you judge in hypocrisy. And with what measure ye meet, whatever measure of judgment that you, you see fit is good, it shall be measured to you again. That's what he's saying. Come on. And why, and why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye? Mm -hmm. But considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. You see what he's saying? He says, why are you looking at the moat that is in your brother's eye, but you don't sit down to examine the beam that is in your own eye? What is he saying? First, you must clean your temple first before you can deal with the nation of Israel. That's what he's saying right there. Meaning, examine yourself first and foremost. Go ahead. Or oh, how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye. And behold, a beam is in, is in thine own eye. So he's saying, how can you say you're going you, you to correct a, your brother with something that he's doing wrong, but you are doing some, the same thing that your brother is doing? Meaning what? You, you can't say, thou shalt not commit adultery, but you're committing adultery. Thou shalt not lie, but you are lie, but you are a liar. Thou shalt not steal, but you are a thief. You can't do that. You understand? Come on. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Thou hypocrite. Thou what? Thou hypocrite. So Christ was teaching that don't judge in hypocrisy. He's not saying don't judge. He says don't judge in hypocrisy. That's the whole thing. That's what he's explaining here. Go ahead. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye. Stop right there. He says first deal with your own issues, meaning what? You know that you, you have a problem with lying. You cannot now go and teach another brother that thou shalt not lie, but you are a liar yourself. So first you must get rid of that lying spirit in you first. Then when you see that the brother is a liar, then you can go and judge the brother and say, bro, correct your brother, correct your neighbor. You're not supposed to be bearing false witness because I used to do that and I repented. Now I'm no longer doing that. You, you, may, you need to stop that because if you do it, the Lord will judge you for that. You understand? Come on. And then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the boat out of thy brother's eye. You see what he said? Now you're going to see clearly because now your sins have not blinded you. Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 2.21. Okay, because your sins have not blinded you. Because sin will blind you. You understand? Watch this. You must first know how to discern your spirits within yourself. The evil spirits within yourself, you must first know how to do that. And you brothers coming in, the way to do that, you must follow instruction. Thou don't do this, don't do that. When leadership tells you, don't, bruh, don't do that, don't do this, but you can do this. Follow the instruction. If you don't follow instruction, guess what? You're not going to be able to discern the evil spirits within you. Understand that? Okay, Wisdom of Solomon 2.21. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Such things they did imagine. They did what? 
such things they did imagine. So the subject matters about imaginations of men. Imaginations of men goes into emotions, goes into opinions. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 23. We're coming back here. He says, such things they did imagine. We need to examine what type of imaginations these are. Read that. Jeremiah 7 verse 23. Because brothers have emotions, brothers have imaginations, brothers are full of opinions. Guess what? We deal with the Bible. We must deal with what is written as it is written. Read what you got. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 27. Verse 23. Pay attention. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. Read. But this thing commanded I them say, Obey my voice, mm -hmm. and I will be your God. Come on. And ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you. Read. And it may be well unto you. So the Lord is commanding Israel through Jeremiah to so listen, obey my voice and I will be your God and ye shall be my people. So many what? Apply what is written. Go ahead. But they hearken not. But they what? No. But they hearken not. Meaning they did not listen. You understand? They did not listen. They did not hear what was taught to them. Go ahead. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear. They didn't pay attention. But, Come on. But walked in the councils mm -hmm. and in the imagination of their evil heart. You see that thing? The imagination of their evil heart, their evil mind. Their mind is evil. Their mind is full of evil and wickedness. And they walked in the imagination of their evil heart. Come on. And went backward and not forward. You see that thing? Instead of pro being progressive, they decided to be slothful and stagnant. You understand? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 2.21 now. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 21. Come on. Such things they did imagine. Mm -hmm. And were deceived. They were what? And were deceived. So they imagine because they, they, these imaginations were the imaginations of their evil mind. You understand? And they were deceived by the imaginations of their evil mind. Okay, come on. For their own wickedness hath blinded them. That's the key right there. Their own wickedness blinded them from what? From getting the sense. Their own wickedness blinded them. You understand? Watch this. Give me a second. Ezra 14, verse 13. Before we can deal with these other nations, we must first deal with ourselves, build our nation up according to our God commanded us. Okay, watch this. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 13. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 13. Come on. Now therefore, set thine house in order mm -hmm. and reprove thy people. Great. Comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. So now what you want to notice with this verse, it says, now therefore set thine house in order. You set your house in order. Before you can go and deal with anybody else, you must set your house in order. You must get your house in order. You must examine yourself. You must examine your house. And the first house that you must examine is your spiritual house. Give me that in First Peter 2. Okay. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter 2 verse 5. Read that. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Come on. Ye also, as lively stones, are mm -hmm. built up a spiritual house. Come on. And holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So now it says you are lively stones now. You are, you are those lively stones. Because a stone is a, is a what? It's a foundation. The stone is used for foundation and all that. And building of the house. For the foundation and for the building. It says now, what says he as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts. Okay. Give me Acts chapter 7. Give me Acts chapter 7 and verse 37. You know what? Read verse, read, read verse 38. Let's just get to the point. Read verse 38. Acts chapter 7 verse 38. Come on. This is he that is in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. 
That's Moses, come on. And with our fathers, who mm -hmm. received the library oracles to give unto us. Who received the what? Who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So those lively oracles is the laws of the Most High God. The lively oracles is God's laws to bring us to life. You understand? Because today in these last days, as a people, we're spiritually dead. The same we were spiritually dead in Egypt. We are spiritually to dead, dead today in new Egypt, in spiritual Egypt. You understand? So now go back to First Peter 2 verse 5. First Peter 2 verse 5. Come on. Be also as lively stones mm -hmm. are built up a spiritual house. So now the and lively oracles, hold on, the lively oracles, guess what? They are the ones that are going to bring us to life. We are dead stones now. We are lively stones because of those lively oracles, the laws of God. And, as, uh, and uh, build up a spiritual house. How do you build up this spiritual house, which is your spirit, your mind? Watch this. Give me Sarah 35 and 1. This is how we build this spiritual house. So before you can build the nation of Israel, you must first build your spirit, your own spiritual house first. Okay? Read that. Sarah 35, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 35, verse 1. Read. He that keepeth the law bringeth mm -hmm. offerings enough. Come on. He that taketh heed to the commandments offereth a peace offering. You see that part right there? If you keep God's commandments, you bring that's those, those are enough offerings. He that she taketh heed to the commandments offereth a peace offering. So when you to for, for you to build a spiritual house, you must offer up these spiritual sacrifices, which is what? God's laws. Applying God's laws to your life. In order for you to do that, you must self-examine because the first person you must lead is yourself. You understand? Watch this. Go back to First Peter chapter 2, verse 5 again. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. Read. And holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You see, so these spiritual sacrifices, which is keeping of God's commandments, they are, must be acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You understand? These spiritual sacrifices is the laws of God. You have to sacrifice your lust. You have to sacrifice your, your covetous spirit. You must sacrifice your evil spirit. You must get rid of me. Get, sacrifice means get rid of this evil spirit that is in you. First, that's how you perform those spiritual sacrifices. You understand? Your spirit is lasting for to, to sleep with a woman. You're, you're not married. You must sacrifice that. You must destroy that evil spirit in you and prepare for you, prepare yourself to be a man so that you can be what? You can be fit to become a husband. You understand? As an example. Now watch this. Go back to Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13 again. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Come on. Now therefore... Set thine house in order mm -hmm. and reprove thy people. You see that? And reprove your people. So first you must set your house in order before you can reprove your people. And the way to set that house in order, you must guess what? You must offer up those spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to the Most High God by his son, the Christ. You understand? Watch this. Then it says, reprove thy people. Okay. Give me the book of Sirach 4 verse 29. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4, verse 29. Because reprove their people. Before you can reprove your people, meaning correct your people, teach them the laws of God, this is what happens when you don't self-examine. You understand? And in this camp, we're not going to move in that spirit. We must deal with ourselves first before we can deal with the nations, we, 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 with the nation of Israel, even. Before we can deal with the nation of Israel, even before we can deal with the other nations, we must first deal with our nation first. And it begins with us, the men. Watch this. Sarah 4, verse 29. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Be not hasty in thy tongue, and in thy deeds slack and remiss. You see what he's saying? He says, don't be too quick with your mouth. Don't be quick with you. Don't be hasty with your tongue. Meaning you're quick to want to go out there and teach the nation. 
but in thy deeds, meaning in your actions, you are slacking and you are what? You are remissing. You are missing the mark. You understand? You are not doing what you're supposed to do. You are not examining yourself. You are cuddling yourself, but you want to go out there and rebuke the other nation, the, I mean, your people. No, no. That's hypocrisy. That's what Christ was explaining in Matthew 7. You understand? Jump down to verse 31. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Let not thine hand be stretched out to receive and shut when thou shouldest repay. You see that thing? Your job right now is to receive understanding, is to receive correction before you can go out there to what? To repay the knowledge that you have learned to your people. So before you can do that, you must get your mind right. Watch this. We read it earlier. Give me Sirach 21, 27 again. Let's read that again. Sirach 21, verse 27. Ecclesiastes 21, verse 27. Come on. When the ungodly cursed Satan, he cursed his own soul. So before we can go out and, and, tell, the, and tell the white man is the devil, we, the, the first thing we must do, we must deal with our own selves. First and foremost, that's why it says, and set them in order before thine eyes. The most high for him to set us in order, we must apply what is written. We must examine ourselves. Self-examination. You must lead your spirit first. You must get your spirit in check first and foremost before you can get your people's spirits in check with the Bible. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Watch this. And why must we do this? Give me Sirach 19, 23. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19, verse 23. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 23. There Hold is on. a wicked wait, wait. Yes, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 23. Mm -hmm. There is a wickedness and the same an abomination. Okay, and, come there on. Is a, and there is a fool wanting in wisdom. You see what the Lord is saying? He says there is a wickedness, the same an abomination. So this same wickedness is an abomination to the Mosai. Because the Mosai hates, give me that in Sarah 15 verse 13 real quick. There is a wickedness and this same wickedness that is done by this brother it's an abomination unto the Most High. Let's see how the Lord feels about abomination. Read that. Sirach 15 verse 13. Ecclesiastes 15 verse 13. Mm -hmm. The Lord hateth all abomination. Mm -hmm. And they that fear God love it not. You see that thing? The Lord hates all abomination. And they that, they fear, the, that fear God, they love it not. They also don't love abomination. So go back to Sarah 15, verse 3. Go back to Sarah 15, verse 23. There is a wickedness and the same an abomination. Mm -hmm. And there is a fool wanting in wisdom. So there is, it says there is a fool wanting. The word wanting means lacking. There is a fool that lacks in wisdom. Because a fool lacks wisdom. A fool cannot hold no knowledge. That's why they what they lack wisdom. You understand? Watch this. So when you self-examine, the things that you're going to examine, you're going to examine the things that are lacking in you. And those things that are lacking, those are the skills that you must acquire. You must attain those skills. That's the, that's, that's, that's the key to success. The first person you must lead is yourself. You must get your mind right first. You understand? You must examine. What are you examining? You are examining the things that are lacking in you. Because here you are, you go to the streets, you teach the people, but your personal life is a mess. You understand? So what does that mean? That means that you don't, you don't work on yourself. You don't examine yourself to examine the things that are lacking in you. Watch this. Give me Titus 1 verse 5. Let's read that. Titus chapter 1. Verse 5. Titus chapter 1, verse 5. Read. For this cause left, the, left I thee in Crete, mm -hmm. that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. You see what the Lord is saying? That you may set, that you may set in order the things that are wanting. That's why you must examine yourself to set in order the things that are lacking in you. That's what good leaders do. Good leaders, they set in order the things that are lacking in themselves. You understand? That's why you have to surround yourself with those brothers 
that have skills that you do not and learn from those brothers and sisters as well. You understand? Read that again. Excuse me. Titus chapter 1 verse 5. Read. For this cause left I thee in Crete, mm -hmm. that thou shouldest set in order the thing, set in order the things that are wanting. Read. And ordain elders in every city. Read. As, I, as I had appointed thee. So before you can even set, elders means leaders. Before you can set leaders in every city, guess what? We must set in order the things that are wanting. You must set in order the things that are lacking in you. You understand? Before you can go out there and raise up other leaders so that they can also wake up the nation of Israel. That's the job of a leader. You will have to have vision. And the vision that you must have is about what? Understanding the things you lack so you can be able to identify skill sets in others that you can use to what? To build the nation of Israel. That's what we're doing here at so uh, Soldiers of Christ. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 5. Colossians 2, verse 5. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 5. Come on. For though I be absent in the flesh, mm -hmm. yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order. And doing what? Joying and beholding your order. Joying and beholding your order. Beholding your order. Meaning what? We must see, must see you in order. We have to order our nation correctly. And before we can order the nation correctly, according to the scriptures, we must make sure that our lives are in order. We have structure. You understand? We have structure in our lives. We must be able to do that. If you cannot get your mind right to even structure your day, how are you going to be able to order the nation of Israel to structure them? You will not be able to do it. You understand? So we need to set in order the things that are lacking. That comes through self-examination and be real with yourself. You understand? Because some brothers are not real with themselves. You lie to yourself all day and tell yourself lies all day and you believe those lies that you tell yourself. You understand? You're deceived by your own vain opinions. Your own imaginations, your own wickedness is what's blinding you to see really how you can actually progress, how you can grow in this truth. You understand? Read that again, verse 5. Colossians chapter 2, verse 5. Read. For though I be absent in the flesh, mm -hmm. yet am I with you in the spirit, mm -hmm. joying and beholding your order, and the, steadfast, the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Your steadfastness, meaning or your discipline, of the discipline of your faith in Christ. That's what steadfastness goes into. Okay, give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. The most high God is about order. You understand? The most high deals with order. And order is kryptonite to the black man, Latino man, Native American Indian man. We hate law and order. That's why our nation is so messed up. That's why there's no leadership in the nation of Israel. The leadership now is us waking up. The Lord setting us in order so we can go out there and show our people what true leadership looks like, what greatness looks like, according to the scriptures. Okay, read that. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Read. Let all things be done decently and in order. Mm -hmm. Read that again. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Mm -hmm. Let all things be done decently and in order. You see what the Lord is saying? Let all things be done decently and in order. So we have to do things in decency and in order. That's how that's why the Lord, the Lord is the apostle Paul is saying the same thing that he said in Titus. We must set in order the things that are lacking, the things that are wanting. You understand? Give me that in Sarah 10. Sarah chapter 10, verse 1. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. A wise judge will instruct his people. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. The government of a prudent man is well ordered. So guess what? We as soldiers of Christ, we are well ordered, but I'm not satisfied with the way we are ordered. We need to do more. You understand? 
I'm not satisfied with it. We need to do more. Read that part again. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1. A wise judge will instruct his people and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. So now we must do more because what we read in, in Psalms 50, that's prophecy. And right now we are fulfilling that prophecy when we are ordering ourselves according to the scripture, organizing, getting our minds right so we can work together. You understand? Have love and respect one for another. Okay, come on. Verse two, read. As the judge of the people is himself, mm -hmm. so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. You see what he's saying? As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So guess what? When the brothers, you brothers that are, when, when, you, when you are not in order, that's a testament to my poor leadership skills. But when you brothers are well ordered, that's a testament to my good leadership skills. Now watch this. What you need to understand is there's some brothers that will come in, they hate law and order. You understand? And so when, when, the, when, when instruction goes out, they don't want to do nothing. You understand? They don't want to do it. Why? Because they hate law and order, so they want to corrupt the other, the brothers in the congregation so that they also hate law and order. Watch this. I'm coming back here. Give me Sirach 22. Okay. Some of you have been, I've, I've been counseling you about the same thing, but you don't want to change it. Why? Because you want to destroy from within. You understand? You want to destroy from within. Some of you have counseled you about the same thing over and over, but you're not changing it because you want to destroy from within. You don't want us to progress. That's not going to happen. You understand? Understand? I'm telling you right now. Read that. Give me Sarah 22, verse 10. Watch this. Start at verse 9. Read 9 and 10. I'm going to show you that spirit because I've been seeing that spirit. And it needs to get, you need to either you get yourself together or you need to hit the road and get out and leave. Go to the Christian church and do whatever the hell you want. Okay, watch this. Sarah 22, verse 9. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 9. Come on. If children live honestly, Mm -hmm. and have wherewithal, they shall cover the baseness of their parents. Because it says, if children live honestly, how are they going to live honestly? Watch this. Give me that in uh, Romans chapter 13. If children live honestly, how are these children going to live honestly? Romans chapter 13, okay, verse 13. Watch this. It, Romans chapter 12. 13. Let's start at verse 12. We're going to read 12 and 12 to 14. Read that. Romans 13, verse 12. Mm -hmm. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Mm -hmm. And let us put on the armor of light. So now the Apostle Paul says, you see, the day is at hand. The day of Christ is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. The works of darkness is the works of sin. Give me Sarah chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 16. We're coming back here. Sarah 11, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 16. Read. Error and darkness had their beginning together with sinners. You see that part right there? Error and darkness had their beginning together. So error and darkness began together with sinners so sinners they err and they are in the midst of sin go ahead and evil shall wax old with them that glory therein you see evil shall wax old with them that glory therein in what in error and in darkness in sin so go back to Sirach 22 verse 9 again no no uh, romans 13 verse 12 romans chapter 13 verse 12 Read. Night is far spent, mm. the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. The works of sin. Put... The works of darkness is the works of sin. Go ahead. And let us put on the armor of light. The armor of light, we're gonna is going to explain it in verse 14. Keep going. The armor of light says we must put on the armor of light. He's going to explain what the armor of light is. Go ahead. Let us walk honestly 
as in the day. You see what he's saying? Let us walk honestly as in the day. So when you put on the armor of light, you're going to walk honestly as in the day. You understand? So what we read in Sarah 22 verse 9 when it says, if children live honestly, guess what? That means they, they, what? they have put off the works of darkness. They have put on the armor of light and they are walking honestly as in the day. Go ahead. Let us walk honestly as in the day, mm -hmm. not in rioting and drunkenness. Read. And in chambering and wantonness. Not, not in chambering and wantonness. Go ahead. Not in chambering and wantonness. Mm -hmm. Not in strife and envying. You see that thing? All of these, these are the works of darkness right here. Rioting, drunkenness, chambering, wantonness, strife and envy. These are all the works of the flesh. Okay, come on. This is how you walk honestly as in the day. This is how you put on the armor of light. Verse 14, watch this. Verse 14, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that thing? That's the armor of light. Christ, Christ is the armor of light. Let us, this is, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's that armor of light. Go ahead. And make not provision for the flesh mm -hmm. to fulfill the lust thereof. You see what he's saying? And make not provision for the flesh. To make provision is to do what? is to put something aside, you know, reserves, so that you can always go back into that sin. That's what he's talking about when he says, um, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. So if children walk honestly as in the day, they're going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, the commandments of the Most High, because Christ comes in the volume of the book. Go back to Sarag now, 22 verse 9 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 9. Read. If children live honestly mm -hmm. and have wherewithal, they shall they cover everything. the base. Wherever. When it says they have wherewithal, meaning they have the basic needs in life. Shelter, food, you understand, clothing, okay? They have the basic things in life. They don't like anything. Go ahead, and they are taught God's laws. Read. They shall cover the baseness of the appearance you see that thing you shall cover the baseness of your parents but watch this read on that now verse 9 is explaining the children that walk honestly verse 10 is going to explain the children that are not walking honestly but guess what they don't want to listen to counsel you understand read but children being haughty being proud through disdain and want of nurture Disdain is disrespect. You understand? They are proud and they are disrespectful. Go ahead. To disdain and want of nurture. Mm -hmm. To stain the nobility of their kindred. You see that thing? It says, and want of nature. They lack nurturing because why? They don't gather instructions from their youth. They don't want to listen to counsel. They don't follow instruction. So it says, and want of nature do stain the nobility of their kindred. You understand? Because the reason why I'm bringing this up, because you always have wicked Negroes. Give, go back to Sirach 10. Go Sirach 10 verse 2 again. You'll always have those wicked Negroes that want to make leadership look bad because of this scripture right here. Because the question is, how is it others are progressing and you're not? So that's not testament to leadership. That's testament to your lack of application. Read that, Sirach 10 verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 2. Go ahead. As the judge of the people him, is himself, mm -hmm. so are his officers. Read. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. You see that thing? So a wise judge will instruct the people. That's why we make sure that we teach the law in this camp. No manga manga business. The law. The, more, the law of the most high God is what we teach here. Okay. Jump down. Read verse 3 now. Come on. Verse 3. An unwise king destroyed his people. You see that thing? But an unwise king. Hold on. An unwise king will destroy his people. How? Because he's not teaching the law. Because he does not have wisdom of the laws of God to instruct the nation. Go ahead. But through the prudence of them 
which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. The city is going to be inhabited by righteous men and women. Because of what? Because of those that have the laws of the Most High God in their spirit, and they have the aptitude to teach the nation and order the people are right. Okay? Now, give me, give me the book. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Okay? Because another thing that we need to understand is this. As a people, as, as men, we're dealing with men. Because the Lord is saying we must order those things that are lacking in our lives. Before we can go out there and deal with the nation of Israel, we must deal with ourselves first. You understand? Watch this. And one of the, one of the, one of the key characteristics of dealing with yourself, you must know how to prioritize things. Because one thing I've seen is that brothers don't know how to prioritize things, the day-to-day -day stuff of their, in their lives. You don't know how to prioritize things. Why? Because you don't examine yourself to see the things that are lacking. You pat yourself on the back. You understand? You lie to yourself. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Remember what, what, what we read in 2nd Esdras. You know what? Go back there. 2nd Esdras 14 verse 13 again. Let's read that again. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 13. Read. Now therefore, set thine house in order. That's the key right there. Set your house in order. You must set your house in order. You understand? That's the commandment. Before you can go and reprove your people, you must set your house in order first. But in order for you to order your house correctly, guess what you must do? You must know how to prioritize, prioritize your life. You must know how to prioritize your life. And that takes discipline. That takes self-examination. That takes being real with yourself. So you know the things that are lacking in you. Watch this. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. To everything there is a season. Mm -hmm. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. Read again. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So now King Solomon is teaching us as to everything there is a season. You see, a fool will not be able to discern that. If you don't know how to, if you cannot examine yourself to order the things that are lacking, you're not going to be able to recognize the changes in season. You understand? You're not going to know how to do that. You're not going to recognize it. Because your, your own wickedness has blinded you to this. And a time to every purpose under heaven. In order for you to know the purpose and the time, you understand? You know, you must know. In order for you to know the season and the time to every purpose under heaven on earth, you need to do what? You need to know how to prioritize things. And that takes self examination. You understand? Watch this. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 11. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Mm -hmm. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. The what? That the race is not to the swift. The race is not to the swift, meaning what? You must have patience in this truth. The reason why you see some of you are rushing, you are making mistakes. You understand? You are making dumb mistakes. It's because you are in a rush. You will be rushing. You understand? Because you want to get somewhere where your spirit is not ready to handle that place that you want to get to. Read that part again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. Mm -hmm. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. Come on. Know the battle to the strong. Because it's about faith, read. Neither yet bread to the wise. Neither bread to the wise, because the Lord is looking for those that lack wisdom so he can feed them with his wisdom. Go ahead. Nor yet favor, nor yet riches to men of understanding. Nor yet riches to men of understanding. Go ahead. Nor yet favor to men of skill. 
Mm-hmm. But time and chance happeneth to them all. But time and chance happen to them all. Meaning what? The Lord is going to give you a time and chance to get your mind right. That's what this is going into. The most that God is going to give you, that's the key. The key is the Lord will give you, that's grace right here. This is grace. But he says what? But time and chance happeneth to them all. The Lord is going to give you a grace period to get your mind together, to get your spirit correct. Watch this. Give me the book of John 11 verse 9. John chapter 11 and verse 9. John chapter 11, verse 9. Come on. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? Mm -hmm. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Read that again, verse 9. John chapter 11, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? Stop right there. Are there not 12 hours in the day? Those 12 hours in the day. Hold this. Give me the book of Genesis 1 and 5. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. Are there not 12 hours in the day? Okay, read that. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. Mm -hmm. And God called the light day. The what? And God called the light day. He called the light day. Mm. This is heavy stuff right here. Yo, this verse right here. Read that again. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. Go ahead. And God called the light day. He called the light day. Read. And the darkness he called night. And the darkness he called night. Go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the first day. So now the day begin when? The day, the day begins when the sun, at sundown. You understand? But at this, mm, I'm not going to touch that, but just keep it simple. The day begins at sundown. So 12 hours in the day. You understand? So 12 hours in the daytime and 12 hours in the nighttime. 24 hours. You understand? So go back to John 11, verse 9, again. John chapter 11, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? Are there not 12 hours in the day? Because guess what? You must use those hours to order your day correctly. You understand? Give me that in Sarak 18, 26. We're coming back here. Sarak 18, verse 26. Ecclesiastes 18 verse 26. Come on. From the morning until the evening, the time is changed. Mm -hmm. And all things are soon done before the Lord. So from morning till evening, the time is changed. So he's telling you, he says, are there not 12 hours in the day? Because from the time from the morning until the evening, those 12 hours, time is going to be changing. You understand? From one hour to the next. So you have to know how to deal with those. Uh, you need to know how to deal with the time changing. You understand? Because there's things that you are doing in that time that is being allocated to you. In order for you to do that, you must have a timetable. You must know because the timetable is going to teach you to prioritize your day, to prioritize the things that you do in that day that you've been given. You understand? That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. Management, time management. Read that again, verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 26. Come on. From the morning until the evening, the time is changed. Mm -hmm. And all things are soon done before the Lord. And all things are soon done before the Lord. Because there's things that must be done soon. You understand? You must, you must do them soon because time is changing. Meaning time is moving. The day is, is not going to be morning forever. Is morning, then it goes to evening. From morning till evening. You understand? Time is changing. So you must make sure that you have, you have prioritized the things that you're going to be doing while the time is changing. That's what he's saying. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 9. 
Okay, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Come on. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, mm -hmm. do it with thy might. Read. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. You see what he's saying? So whatever you find your whatever your hand finds to do, he says, do it with thy might. For the because all these things, no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom. There's no wisdom no, in the grave. There's no plans in the grave, no work in the grave. You are dead, you are sleeping. So he's saying, guess what? Whatever you find your hand, your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Do it in sincerity and in truth. And know exactly why you are doing what you are doing. Give me that in Sarah 736. You must know the objective of the objective and the outcome of what you are doing. Don't get yourself involved in something, but you don't know the end game. You must know the end game. That's how you wanna, that's how you wanna take, take your timetable seriously. You wanna take the time that has been allocated to you seriously. You're not gonna waste the time. You understand? Read that. Please repeat the verse, sir. Sirach 736. Come on, I need you to pay attention. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 36. Whatsoever thou takest in thine hand, remember the end, and thou shalt never do amiss. You see what he's saying? Whatsoever thou takest in hand, that's the same thing that Solomon is saying here in Ecclesiastes. You understand? It says, remember the end. Always know the end game. And it says, then you shall never do amiss. You understand? A lot of you, you do things on a daily, but you don't know the end game. You understand? And that's why you lack discipline because you lack discipline because you don't understand. You don't know the end game of what you're doing. You have to know the end game. So guess that will motivate you to keep doing what you're doing because you know the end game. You understand? Watch this. Go back to Ecclesiastes now. Chapter 9, verse 10 again. Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 10. Read. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, mm -hmm. do, it with all thy, do it with thy might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. You see that thing right there? So now... What, that's why he's saying you must use your time wisely. Don't waste the time that has been given to you. Watch this. Now, let's go back. Go back to John 11 verse 9. Again. John chapter 11 verse 9. Read. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? Mm -hmm. If any man walk in the day... Stop right there. That, hold on. It says, if any, more, any man walk in the day. So we, where did we just read this at? Because I know some of you forgot already. Go back to Romans 13, verse 13 again. Okay? Because the apostle Paul was saying the same thing that Christ said. Romans 13, verse 13, once again. Romans 13, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Read. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. So he's commanding us to walk honestly as in the day. So go back to John 11 verse 9 again. John chapter 11 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. Because he seeth the light of this world. He seeth the light of this world. He seeth the light of this world. G keep reading. Read verse 10. Watch this. Verse 10. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth. Because there is no light in him. So now he's explaining the light of the world in verse 10. He says, because there is no light in him. What light is he talking about? He's talking about himself. He's talking about him. Christ is talking about himself. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 6.23. That light that we must walk in. You understand? So when you know the time, guess what you're going to do? You're going to use that time wisely. And the things that you're going to do in that time that has been given to you, you're not going to waste that time. That's the grace. Okay? 
Read that. Proverbs 6.23. Read. Proverbs 6, verse 23. Read. For the commandment is a lamp. Mm -hmm. And the law is light. And the law is light. The law is light. The law is light. Now watch this. Give me Matthew 23, 23. So what Christ was teaching us was he's teaching us what? We need to prioritize things. You understand? So in order for you to set in order the things that are lacking, you need to know, you need to prioritize those things. But you're not going to prioritize something that you don't examine and admit that you are lacking in this thing. How are you going to be able to prioritize something that you don't know nothing about? The only way for you to know about those things, you must examine yourself. Then when you examine yourself, you know you. You understand? You know that you are lacking in this area, that area, that and the other. So now your job is to now take those things. That's why I told a lot of all of you. I said, make a list of the things that you are struggling with. Prioritize them. Then seek counsel so we deal with those things. A lot of you, you have not done it. You understand? Some of you done it, but you decided to abandon it. Now, those things, those issues, they keep coming back because you don't follow counsel. Because you don't, you don't want to improve yourself. You want to remain stagnant. You don't want to progress. You're not, you're not progressive. You're not, you don't want to be productive. Because in your spirit, if your spirit is correct, the works you do will also reflect that. You understand? Matthew 23, 23. Read that. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Come on. What one to you? Scribes and Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Hypocrites. For ye paid tithe, for ye paid tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Mm -hmm. Judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. You see, a lot of you, you know the scripture right here, but you are still struggling because you don't apply it. It says, ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. These are spices and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith. It says, these ought ye have done, ought you have to, ought to have done and not leave to leave the other undone. So Christ is, say, is, Christ is teaching us we must prioritize things in our lives. You understand? Because a lot, a lot of you, you are quick to rush to want to be something or someone, but you are missing, you are missing the most important things, the basics. You understand? Because this, 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 this truth is not about just going to camp on the Sabbath. No. This truth is bigger than just going to camp on the Sabbath day. You understand? Because when you, this, the whole week, your job is to get your mind right, you apply and all that. On the Sabbath day, you are going to be teaching the things that you are applying. You understand? That's what's going to make you a good teacher. You understand? That's what's going to make you a good leader in is a great leader. Great leaders, they know how to deal with themselves. They know how to get their spirit in check because they examine themselves. They know the things that they are struggling with and they what? They make moves to get to fix those things, to repair those things. That's where the scriptures comes in, where you have to apply. You understand? That's why some of you have lost your rank because you don't apply the scriptures. You understand? You are focusing on the, the mint, the, ani, the anise, and the cumin. You are focusing on those things, but you are omitting the weightiest matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith. You are omitting those things. You are only focusing on the cosmetic things. Cosmetics. But you are forgetting the weightier matters of the law. You understand? The commandments of the Most High God. Self-examination. Okay? Watch this. Give me... And one of the things that you must do, you have to study. That's the first thing. That's the second thing. You must prioritize. You must prioritize. That's time management. Secondly, you must study. You must prioritize. Your studies come first. You must study. You must prioritize your studies. They must be on top. Because when you study, that's how you're going to be able to get to set in order the things that are lacking in your spirit. Go back to uh, Titus 1 verse 5 again. Let's read that again so we don't lose the thought. Okay, Titus 1, verse 5. Read that again. Titus chapter 1, verse 5. 
Mm -hmm. For this cause, left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed thee. You see that thing? So we must set in order the things that are wanting, the things that are lacking. You understand? Because when, when let's, here you are, you prioritizing your things, right? Okay, you examining, you discover things that are lacking. You need to be able to, those things that you discover, notice I'm saying things because it's plural, it's more than one. So you have to know how to prioritize those things in order of importance. You understand? So that when you study, you know exactly what you are studying for. You're going to have to, you're going to tailor your studies according to the things that you know that they are a problem. That's what it means to set your house in order. You understand? Give me Sarah 6 verse 18. Watch this. The second thing is you must study. You understand? The first thing you must manage your time and then you must prioritize the things that you're going to do in that time that is allocated. Secondly, you need to study. Because what I, why are you studying? You are studying for things that you know they are a problem so you can repent from them. Okay? Read that. Okay? Sarah 6 verse 18. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 18. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. Mm -hmm. So shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. That's a commandment right there. It says, my son, gather instruction from thy youth up. You brothers coming into the truth, you are still kids. You are still children. You understand? You are not ready to lead anyone yet. So guess what? Guess what you're supposed to do? Your job is to gather instruction. You gather instruction from your youth up because you're coming in, you are two months into the truth. You are six months in the truth. You are nine months into the truth. Guess what you are? You are a nine-month-old baby in this truth. You are three years into the truth. You are a three-year-old. You understand? So read that again, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 18. Right. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. Mm -hmm. So shalt thou find wisdom until thine old age. He says, gather instruction from your youth. Then he says, so shalt thou find wisdom. You're going to find wisdom till thine old age. Because imagine you, you didn't gather instruction from your youth. You're coming into this truth, you don't get an instruction. You just want to be, you just want to look and sound deep. You understand? You want to, you'll be asking like deep questions, but you, you cannot even manage a timetable that you set on a day to manage your day. I mean, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever because you have no sense. So your job is to gather instruction from your youth so that when you are old, you're going to have that wisdom. Because you know, those instructions that you're gathering when you are still young, you're going to have wisdom in your old age because you're going to be applying and gaining experience in your application. Watch this. Give me Sarak 25 verse 3. Sarak 25 verse 3. Because Please imagine ask. you are older now, but you, you have no wisdom. I mean, that's, that's embarrassing. You are older now, you don't have wisdom. You, you don't have wisdom. Why? Because you didn't get an instruction. You didn't follow the instructions of the teachers. Okay? Read that. Sarah 25 verse 3. Ecclesiastes 25 verse 3. If thou hast gathered nothing in thy youth. You see what he's saying? If you have gathered nothing in your youth, what is that? What, what, what are you supposed to gather in your youth? Instruction. That's what you're supposed to gather. Now, the flip side is, if thou has not gathered nothing in thy youth, go ahead. How canst thou find anything in thine age? How are you going to find that wisdom in your old age? How are you going to find it? You're not going to find it. You are going to be an old fool. That's why it's important that you gather instruction now as you're coming in. So that as you, then you develop a pattern of good works of gathering those instructions and maintain that pattern of good works of gathering instructions and continue in those things that you've been taught. Watch this. Give me, go back to Sarak 6. Sarak 6 now. 
verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 19. Read. Come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth, mm -hmm. and wait for her good fruit. For thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her, but thou shalt eat of her fruit right soon. So when it says, come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth, the hair is wisdom. Come unto wisdom as one that ploweth and soweth. Because guess what? A farmer, what they do, they have to plow the field. They have to prepare the field. They get rid of the weeds. They soften the ground and all that. And then they plant the seed. And then in due season, you're going to reap the fruits of your labor. So the same thing in this truth. You must gather instruction from your youth. When you go older, you're going to start to see the fruits of your laboring in this truth. You understand? Then you're going to see the fruits of your labor. You're going to get the wisdom because you get that instruction from your youth. Come on. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. Come on. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. So the hair is wisdom. It says she, wisdom, is very unpleasant to the unlearned. Because if you're not learned in the scriptures because you don't study, because the, the, the objective for, remember what we read in Sirach 7. It says, go back to Sirach 736, because I know some of you forgot. Sirach 736, read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 36. Go ahead. Whatsoever thou takest in thine hand, remember the end. No, no, no. It says, whatsoever thou takest in hand. Read that again. Read it right. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 36. Whatsoever thou takest in hand, remember the end. Mm. And thou shalt never do a miss. You see that thing? So if you are studying, but you don't have the objective of what you are studying for, you're not going to really get have motivation to study because you don't prioritize things. I mean, I had to go as carnal as possible. I even had to use a carnal example. I said, make a list of the things that you know they are wrong with you. For you to do that, you have to examine yourself to see the things that are lacking. Then when you study, you know exactly what you are studying for. You know, I have a problem in this area, in that area, in that area. So when you study, you know exactly what is the objective of you studying those particular scriptures because you know it's going to what is going to make me to be a better man, to be a better, good brother, a better man than I am now. You understand? It's going to change me from a boy into a man. You have, to have an, you have to have a vision of why you are doing what you are doing. That's what the Lord is teaching us here. But guess what? As a people, we don't do that. We don't examine things because we're always in a rush. We want popcorn blessings. Okay? Go back to Sarah 6 now, verse 20 again. Ecclesiastes 6, verse 20. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. Mm -hmm. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. If you don't have understanding, you're not going to remain with wisdom. Well, wisdom will not remain with you. Watch this. It says she's very unpleasant to the unlearned. Wisdom is unpleasant to those that don't learn. Watch this. Give me Sarah 51 verse 23. This is what the Lord commanded us to fix that problem. You understand? To ready me to that situation, this is what the Lord commanded us. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 51 verse 23. Mm-hmm. Draw near unto me, ye unlearned. Ye what? And ye unlearned. He says, draw near unto me, ye unlearned. Remember, it says wisdom is very unpleasant. Not just unpleasant, very unpleasant to the unlearned. Go ahead. Draw near unto me, ye unlearned, and dwell in the house of learning. The house of learning is what? Is the... Is, is us establishing camps where brothers and sisters can come and learn. That's the house of learning. So now it says, draw near unto me, ye unlearned. So when you examine yourself to see the things that are lacking so you can set them in order, one thing you're going to realize is that you are not learned as much as you thought you were. You are not clever as much as you thought you were because now you are stumbling over basic things. So but if you are spiritual you're going to realize that, you know what? I'm not as clever as I think I am. 
I'm not as smart as I think I am. When you're stumbling over basic things, just do a timetable. Structure your day. You can't get that right. Listen, you have no business teaching anyone. Understand that thing. You have no business even thinking of having a wife. How are you going to set your house in order if you cannot? How are you going to correct your wife? How are you going to teach and guide her? How are you going to teach and guide your children if you cannot even get a simple timetable right? How are you going to do that? You have to have, you have to be realistic. You understand? Watch this. Um, keep going. Read verse 24. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Wherefore are ye slow? They see what the Lord is asking. Why are ye so dumb? Because that's what it means to be slow. He says, wherefore are ye slow? Why are you so stupid? The Lord is asking us. You understand? Come on. And what say ye of these things? Right? Seeing, seeing your souls are very thirsty. Seeing your souls are very thirsty. Meaning you are thirsty for this knowledge, but you don't want to learn so you can what quench your thirst. You see that thing right there? Read. I opened my mouth and said, buy her for yourselves without money. You see what he's saying? He's quoting Isaiah. Let's get there. Give me Isaiah 55 real quick. Okay. Isaiah 55, start of verse 7. You know, I'll start at verse 1. Let's read verse 1. We're going to read down. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Mm -hmm. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. You see what he's saying? He says, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. The waters is the scriptures, according to Ephesians 5.26. And he that hath no money, he says, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Meaning what? You don't need money to learn this. That's why, you know, you don't get charged to attend class and to learn. Nobody's going to charge you for this is free. You understand? That's why it says, come by, you know, it says, without money and without price. You understand? So the thirst that you have for this truth, when you are thirsty, you have to, because even in, 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 in a carnal sense, what happens when you are thirsty? You drink water. But for some reason, brothers come into the truth. Now you are not thirsty anymore for this. That makes sense? That makes no sense whatsoever. But every day you are thirsty, you drink water, you go to the tap, you fill the cup, you drink. But when it comes to this, you are not thirsty for this. So that doesn't make any sense. But in phys physically you're doing it, but spiritually you don't. Spiritually you are, you, are, you are thirsty. You understand? You are starving. But physically you feed yourself. But spiritually you do not. So you are spiritually skinny, but physically fat. You see that thing? Makes no sense. So we need the laws of God to bring sense to our spirits. Okay, let's go back. Sarah 51. Okay, verse 25 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 51, verse 25. Read. I opened my mouth and said, buy her for yourselves without money. That's the same thing that Isaiah said. Come on. Put your neck under the yoke mm -hmm. and let your soul receive instruction. She is hard at she is hard at hand to find. You see what he's saying? It says, put your neck under the yoke, the yoke of wisdom, and let your soul receive instruction. Because your soul is what must be fed. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs. Okay. Proverbs chapter 19, I believe. Proverbs chapter 19. Let's get that in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Also, that the soul be without knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
It is not good. It is not what? It is not good. You see what the Lord is saying? Also, a soul that is without knowledge, it is not good. A soul be without knowledge, it is not good. Meaning what? You are good for nothing. Your soul that is without this, that soul that is without knowledge is not good. Meaning you are not correct. You are not right. Your spirit is not right. You are crooked. You understand? What is the knowledge? Give me that in Psalms 19. Okay. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 2. Read that. Psalms chapter 19 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Day unto day utter its speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. And night unto night showeth knowledge. Jump down to verse, keep going. Verse 3. There is no speech nor language with their voice, where their voice is not heard. Mm -hmm. Read. Their line is gone, is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. So now let's talk about the prophets now. You understand? He's going into the prophets. But what I want to show you is, is this day unto day uttereth speech. And night unto night showeth knowledge. This knowledge, this knowledge is what's going to be shown by the prophets in verse 4. Read verse 4 again. Psalms chapter 19, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Their line is gone out through all the earth. The line of the prophets. That's the, the line is the line of the prophets. Go ahead. And their words to the end of the world. They are what? And their words. To the end of the earth. Their to words, the end of the world. To the, their words to the end of the world. Their words. The prophets, when they come, they come with the words of the Mosai. That's the knowledge that they bring in. Go ahead. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. You see that thing? The sun goes into what? Light. Because the sun brings light, which is wisdom. Okay. So that knowledge, that soul that is without wisdom of the Lord, that is brought by the prophets, he said, that soul is not good. That soul is not good. So guess what? You have to have the knowledge of the Most High God. You must be taught. You understand? Go back to Sarah 51. Sarah chapter 51. Read verse 26 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 51 verse 26. Mm -hmm. Put your neck under the yoke and let your soul receive instruction. She is hard at hand to find. Because the wisdom of the Most High God is hard to find. The Lord does not give his wisdom to anyone. Understand that. So when you come into this truth, you must be thirsty for this and study and apply, ask questions, seek counsel. That's what you have to do. Why? Because your soul is on the line. Go ahead. Behold. Behold with your eyes how that I have had but little labor and have gotten unto me much rest. You see what we see what it's saying? It says, Behold with your eyes how that I have had lit, I had but little labor and have gotten me much rest. Why is he saying little labor? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 49. Watch this. It says, Little labor. Let me show you something. Isaiah 49, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. Come on. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant mm -hmm. to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Come on. And to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Northern kingdom, that, read. That thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So now that's the same thing that we just read in Psalms 19. So, but what I want to show you here is that it says, it is, it, is a, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. It is a light thing, meaning what? It's a small thing for us to do. This is our reasonable service right here. It says, it is a light thing. That's why it says, it says what? Go back to Sirach 51 verse 27, because Sirach is quoting Isaiah. 
Okay, Sarah 51 verse 27. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 51 verse 27. Come on. Behold with your eyes mm -hmm. how that I have had but little labor. Stop right there. It says, how that I have but little labor. It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the 12, the 12 tribes of Israel. It is a small thing, but brothers be stumbling at this. It is a small thing for what we are doing. It is the least we can do for what the evils that we've done before the Most High. You understand? So that's why it says little labor. But brothers, they are, they, they, they are, they are, they go, it's like a, it's like a drag for them to sit down and study. But the Lord is saying here, it says, it says, I have but little labor. It is a light thing. It is a light thing for what we're, what we're doing. You understand? Read that again, verse 27. Ecclesiastes chapter 51, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Behold with your eyes how that I have had but little labor and have gotten unto me much rest. And have gotten unto me much rest. Watch this, because Christ said the same thing. Give me that in Matthew 11, verse 28. Matthew. We're still dealing with the next character, the next, the next character. You have to study. You must prioritize your studies. And whereas you study, you know exactly why you are studying. That's how you're gonna fuel. That's how, that's how you you're gonna what? You wanna keep that fire burning in your spirit. Matthew eleven verse twenty eight. Read that. Matthew chapter eleven verse twenty eight. Come on. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. This Christ is saying the same thing that we just read in Sirach. He says, "Come unto me, all ye that labor." Remember, it says it's a little labor. It's a light thing. You understand? And I heavy laden and I will give you rest. Watch this. When it says heavy laden, give me Isaiah 1 verse 4. It says we are heavy laden. Remember, keep it in the context of the class of what we're going over. You understand? Because you must examine yourself so that you can, you can set in order the things that are lacking. And you must prioritize those things that are lacking so you can fix them and repair those things. How do you do that? You must manage your time. You must study so you know what you are studying for. Okay? Read that. Isaiah 1, verse 4. Come on. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4. Read. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. A people laden with sin. It says, are heavy laden. We are laden with sin. That's why you need to examine yourself. Because you are what? You are dealing with demons. So you have to examine yourself. We are laden with iniquity, with sin. Many sins we are laden with. Go ahead. A people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, mm -hmm. children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. You see that thing? Because of sin, we have what? We are children that are corruptors. We forsaken the Lord. We provoke the Holy One of Israel to anger. They are gone away backwards. We are stagnant. We are even regressing instead of progressing. You understand? Because of sin. So that's what Sirach is saying right there. Go back to say. Go back to. Uh, go back to Matthew now. Eleven verse twenty-eight again. Matthew chapter eleven verse twenty-eight. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. It says, I heavy laden, heavy laden with sin, because we are laden with sin. Is the Lord says, I'm going to give you rest. But guess what? We must come unto him. You understand? Because we know that we are heavy laden. How are you going to know? The only way for you to know if you are heavy laden with, if we are heavy laden with sins, is you need to do what? Give me that in Romans 7. Romans 7 verse 7. Romans 7, verse 7, read that. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. Come on. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Mm -hmm. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, 
Except the law said, thou shalt not covet. Except the Lord, the law had said, thou shalt not covet. So the apostle Paul is saying, for you to know if you are heavy laden with iniquity, the laws of God must be taught to you. Once you know the laws of God, you must begin to apply the laws of God so you can get rid of those sins that you are laden with. Then the Lord says, then I will give you rest. You see the steps to this thing. The most says about order, and that's what we're reading here. Go back to Matthew 11, verse 28 again. The Lord Matthew. is giving us this. The Lord is giving us, he's saying, this is the problem. This is the steps to overcome. So now he's saying, read that, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and mm. I will give you rest. Then he says, he says, he says come unto me. Remember we read in, um, in Sirach 51, it says, draw near unto me, ye, or it says, draw near unto me, ye unlearned, and dwell in the house of learning. So those of you that are unlearned, it says, he's calling us, those of us, he says, come into the house of learning and learn, because what? You are unlearned. So come unto me, all ye that are unlearned, like it says in Sirach, all ye that labor, we must labor in this truth. You keep the commandments and are heavy laden. We know that we are laden with sins. Then the Lord says, once you know that you are laden because you are examining yourself, the Lord says, when you repent, when I return, I'll give you rest. That's the rest he's talking about right there. Give me Isaiah 14. Then the Lord says, I'm going to give you rest. Okay. Isaiah chapter 14, start of verse 1. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Come on. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob mm -hmm. and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So now this is when the Lord returns. The Lord says he's going to have mercy upon Jacob. Now jump down to verse 3. This is the rest based on the mercy that the Lord will have upon Israel. Read that. Verse 3, come on. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. You see that thing? The Lord, hold on. The Lord is going to give us rest from our sorrow. The Lord is going to give us rest because right now we are sorrowful. You understand? We are sorrowful. We are oppressed and depressed because of sin. Because of what? Sin. So now the Lord says, it's going to come to pass where he will give us rest from our sorrow. But we must labor because we acknowledge that we are laden with sins. Okay, come on. And from thy fear, mm -hmm. and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. You see that thing? Right now we are saving hard bondage. You understand? We are laden with sins. We are laden with sins, and we are saving hard bondage. The Lord says you must come unto him. When we repent, when he returns, he will give us rest. Meaning what? The kingdom. That's the rest. Okay? Let's go back. Um, Matthew 11. Verse 29 now. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Take my yoke upon you. Read. And learn of me. Come on. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Mm -hmm. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. The kingdom. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So Christ says, come and learn. I'm going to feed you if you come and learn. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Right now, we don't, our souls don't have rest. We're in captivity. We're keeping God's commandments in afflictions. But when the Lord returns, we're going to find rest unto our souls. We're going to be singing loud upon our beds, like you read in Psalms 149. Watch this. Um... Give me, go back to Sarah 51. You know what? Mm, no, that's it on that. Go back to Sarah 6. I don't want to go there. Go back to Sarah 6. Okay. Sarah chapter 6. Read verse 21 now. Sarah 6 verse 21. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 21. Read. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial. 
and he who caused her from him ere it belong ere it belong ere it belong meaning before it belong so he says she will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial that's wisdom because your job is supposed to gather instruction from your youth so you can learn as you are learning you are getting your mind right you are setting your house in order because you know what's missing the laws of god is going to provide is going to deal with that lack you understand so but if you don't want to learn you don't want to study so you can examine yourselves and provide and and fix the problems that you have in your life guess what the wisdom is going to be very unpleasant to you this bible is going to be very unpleasant to you studying is going to be a job to you it's not going to be something that you find joy in doing you understand read verse 21 again ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 21 Mm -hmm. she will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial mm -hmm. and he will cast her from him ere it belong meaning what you're going to start to get rid of the bible you don't want, you're not going to want you're not going to want to hear the laws of the most high god watch this sirach 21 verse 15 sirach chapter 21 start at verse 14 start at verse 14 watch this ecclesiastes chapter 21 verse 14 read The inner parts of a fool are like mm. a broken vessel. Read and and he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. You see what the Lord is saying? The inner parts of a fool is his mind. The inner parts of a fool is his mind. It says they are like a broken vessel, meaning your mind is like a broken vessel. He will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. Because if you have a vessel that is broken, you can pour, you cannot put anything in it. because it's going to leak that's the mind of a fool that's the mind of somebody who does not want to learn or gather instruction from their youth up so in your personal life you are going to struggle because yes you know the scriptures you know the precepts because another thing is it's not about how many precepts you can collect or recall in your head that don't mean nothing if you don't apply you're like a machine you can no it don't mean nothing if you cannot apply what is written you have to apply you understand keep going because you cannot hold no knowledge as long as you live because guess what as you as long as you are living you your mind is supposed to hold that knowledge how you apply the knowledge that's how you going to hold it in by applying it that's what that means you don't study because so that you can just recall precepts that's dumb as hell You study because you want to change your life. You want to change your thinking. You want to improve yourself so you can be a benefit to your nation. You understand? Read verse 15. Verse 15. Come on. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and mm. add unto it. Come on. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeaseth him and mm -hmm. he casteth it behind his back. You see that part right there and he casted it what is the it the wise the the, the words of wisdom you going to cast the words of wisdom behind his back meaning what they going to roll over you they're going to roll over you like a like um like water of a duck's back that's how the laws that's how the commandments of the most high god are going to be they're going to just roll over you you're going to cast it behind your back because why because now it's a mighty stone of trial before it belong you're going to say you know what let me drop this stone let me drop this knowledge let me leave it because what is unpleasant to me but you are bringing that unpleasantness to yourself because you don't study and as you study you don't apply the whole objective of you studying is so you can apply because it doesn't mean anything if you read but you don't apply it what's the point you understand watch this now Give me Sirach 6. Okay, jump down to verse 32. Sirach 6 verse 32. Excuse me. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 32. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. So if thou wilt, he says thou shalt be taught. If you want to be taught, you are going to be taught. if thou will apply your mind thou shall be prudent because when you when you are taught your job is to apply your mind to the things that you are learning then you're going to have prudence 
meaning wisdom. Go ahead. If thou love to hear, mm -hmm. thou shalt receive understanding. Uh -huh. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. You see what he's saying? If you love to hear, hear what? Wisdom. Thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. He's repeating himself again because Israel is slow. Go ahead. Stand in the multitude of the elders mm -hmm. and cleave unto him that is wise. That's why a lot of you now I have to force you to seek counsel. The reason why I'm forcing you to seek counsel is because you say you want to go to camp, you, you want to teach, but you why must I force you to seek counsel? Because you're not going to grow if you don't seek counsel. And now I need to start to implement certain rules now because of this. If you don't seek counsel, you are not going to go to camp, neither will you teach. Because you seeking counsel and applying is to do what? Is to make sure that when you go out there, you teach, you are, gonna, you are representing the body. You are representing Christ. So you cannot be allowed to be standing holding the mic teaching, but you don't apply nothing. You don't seek counsel. How are you going to be able to guide the person that is coming here there to hear what you are teaching about? Because you need to understand, a lot of you forget that we are like doctors. When our people come to hear the word of God, we give them the word of God. We give them the medication that they need for their sicknesses, their sins. That's how you have to look at it. You understand? Read. Verse 35. Mm -hmm. Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. So now you must, it says be willing. You must be willing. A lot of you, you are forced. You must be willing. You understand? It says be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape you. Because the reason why a lot of you you, 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 you stumble at basic things is because you are not willing to hear every good, godly discourse. You don't have the, the, a willing spirit to learn. You understand? And there's parables of understanding. They are always escaping you because you cast them behind your back like we read in Sirach 21 verse 15. You can't hold no knowledge because you don't apply. You understand? Come on. And if thou seest the man of understanding... Get thee betimes unto him, mm -hmm. and let thy foot with the steps of his door. Now, I want to deal with that. Read verse 36 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 36. Come on. And if thou seest a man of understanding, mm -hmm. get thee betimes unto him, and let thy foot with the steps of his door. So now it says, if you see a man of understanding, it says, get thee betimes unto him, meaning what? Frequently. You must frequent that man. You understand? And let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Watch this. This is a similitude here. But I want to deal with that part. It says, let your foot wear the steps of his door. Watch this. Let's deal with the door. Because your foot, it means what? You are going to that man to learn wisdom so that the parables of understanding do not escape you. Now, let's deal with that door. Give me the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. I just want to deal with that door with this. Revelation 3, verse 20. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Go ahead. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. You see what he's saying? Read it again. Keep putting some power in your reading. Come on. Verse 20 again. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Read. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So now it says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Remember, it says, when you see a man of understanding, get thee be times unto him and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Now, Christ says he wants to enter. He says, I knock, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. If any man hear my voice, let's deal with that. 
the voice of the Lord. Give me that in Deuteronomy 27. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 10. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 10. Read. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God mm -hmm. and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. So the voice of the Lord our God is his commandments. You understand? Go back to where he was at now. Revelation 3 verse 20. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Mm -hmm. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So now this door right here is making reference to your mind, your conscience, your spirit. I stand at the door and I'm knocking. How does the Lord knock? He uses the prophets to bring the laws of God to you. If any man hear my voice, the laws of God, like we read in, Pro, in Deuteronomy 27, and open the door, meaning what? Allow the, the words of Christ to enter into your mind, your spirit. He says, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So guess what? Now the Lord is raising up men. And the Lord, for him to raise up men, the voice of the Lord must be in the mind of that man, those leaders that he's setting up. So that the people that are coming to learn at the camp, at the school, guess what? They're going to be able to, to get the knowledge of Christ that is in the mind of that brother. So likewise, when you come in into this truth, you must now go to the leadership that the Lord has set over you, the teachers, to teach you. That's why it says, let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Because his door is his mind. What's in his mind? Christ is in his mind. And it's supping with him. Feeding his spirit so he can feed the congregation. You see, as a people, black people don't understand that. You come into this truth, already you want to be equal to those that came before you. We don't understand order and law and structure and nation building. You understand? Already you coming in, I want to be just like that brother. I want to do, I want to do like him. I want to be over him. I want to be, I want to outdo him. You are not in the right spirit. You understand? You are not in the right spirit. That's why some of you are window shopping. You know why you're window shopping? Is because you are moving with the spirit of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, because that's what they were doing. They wanted to make themselves equal with Moses and Aaron. And the Lord put them to death. He put those Negroes to death. Yeah, he did that thing. Why? Because Negroes don't understand law and order and structure and rank. They don't get that. But the Bible talks about rank. Why? That's how we set the nations in order. You understand? Watch this. Um, give me John 14, verse 16. Okay, John 14, verse 16. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse 16. Go ahead. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter mm -hmm. that he may abide with you forever. So now this is Christ speaking. He says, I will pray to, I will pray the father that he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Go ahead. Even the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. That comforter whom, is the spirit of truth. Go ahead. Whom the world cannot receive mm -hmm. because it seemeth because it seeth him not. Read. Neither knoweth him. But ye know him. For he dwelleth with you. And he and shall be in you. And shall be in you. So this comforter is the spirit of truth. You understand? It says what? But ye know him because ye know him. For he dwelleth with you. And he shall and shall be in you. He's going to tell us what the comforter is. Which is the spirit of truth. Next verse. Verse 18, watch this. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. I will not leave you comfortless. Now come on. I will, I will come to you. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So who's the comforter? Christ is the comforter. He's talking about himself in the third person. But he is the comforter. You understand? So guess what? What we read in Revelation 3 verse 20 is the same thing that Christ is saying here. He says, he will come to you. He will come to, into your mind. Your job is to allow Christ to come into your spirit 
So Christ can feed your spirit with his laws, statutes, and commandments. That's the door. Once Christ does that, guess what? The people that are going to come in to learn, guess what? They're going to come, they're going to, they're going to come, their foot are going to wear the steps of your door because your mind, Christ is feeding your mind so you can feed the flock. That's how you have to look at this thing because this is about the nation. But before we can deal with the nation of Israel, we must first deal with ourselves. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to go back to John 14. John 14, verse 21. Read verse 21 now. John chapter 14, verse 21. Come on. He that hath my commandments mm -hmm. and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Read. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Mm -hmm. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. You see what he's saying? And will manifest myself to him. How is Christ going to manifest himself to you? Because Christ is going to teach you his wisdom. And when the people hear you teach, you will be teaching in the spirit of Christ. And the people are going to come and learn. That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. Watch this. Give me Sarah 8 verse 8. Ecclesiasticus. The reason why I'm dealing with this because this is not the first time I'm dealing with this class like this. Something similar. But I'm going on another route now with this. Sarah 8 verse 8. Read that. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 8. Read. Despise not the discourse of the wise. Mm -hmm. But acquaint thyself with, the, with their proverbs. Read. For of them thou shalt learn instruction. Mm -hmm. And how to serve great men with ease. You see that thing? So what you need to understand is that it says, don't despise the discourse of the wise. The discourse is talking about what? Their wisdom. Don't despise the wisdom of the wise, but you must acquaint yourself with their proverbs, their parables. Their, their, their parables of understanding must not escape you, like we read in uh, Sirach 636. You understand? He says, you mustn't do that. Okay, it says, for of them thou shalt learn instruction. That's why you are here, you brothers. You are here to learn instruction so that you can know how to serve great men with ease. Because a lot, you see, men in Israel, they don't understand honor and structure. Honor. They don't understand honor and respect and discretion. They don't understand that. That's why when you come in, we have to teach you these things. We have to teach you these things like a baby needs milk from his mother's breast. You understand? Come on, verse 9. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Miss not the discourse of the elders. Read. For they also learned of their fathers. And of them thou shalt learn understanding and to give answer as need requireth. So then you're going to be able to give answer to those that are going to ask you. You understand? So right now, you'll find yourself that you just study just so you can answer quick. No. You must study so you can apply. So that when you give in, when you give the answers, you also use the experiences that you have in the truth now. It's not just about just pulling a precept. No. That because the precept, when it comes out, when it's got experience behind it, it has more impact to the person that's asking. But if you don't have experience because you don't apply, it's just a, it's just it's just words that don't mean nothing. That it doesn't have weight because you don't apply, so you can get experience. You understand? Watch this. Give me 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Read. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Mm -hmm. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Read. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You see what he's saying? You must study to show yourself approved. Not to me, but to the most high. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. You can't be ashamed to learn this truth so you can declare it to your people by your example. It says, rightly dividing the word of truth, precept upon precept. But in order for you to be able to do that and that your, your teachings have weight, you must apply. That's the key to success in this truth, application. You understand? So the reason why I'm dealing with the studies is because a lot of you, 
you are doing your four chapters. Some of you, you are doing it consistently. Some of you, you're not. But what I am seeing is that a lot of you, yes, you are reading, you are studying, but you don't have the spirit when you are studying. You are doing it because you, you don't really want to do it. You, you feel forced to do it. But the reason why I had to start with, you must prioritize things. You must examine the things that are lacking so that when you study, you know exactly what you are studying. You must study sin specific things. Yes, you must do your four chapters, but you must also study sin specific things. Things that are, you are dealing with on a day to day. You must study for those things as well. You understand? Now, here's another thing. So the third thing, the, the third thing that we wanna, I want to deal with is that a lot of the time is that you are in this truth, you go to camp, you attend classes, but your personal life is still a mess. What's the problem? You understand? It's because you don't apply. That's the main problem, lack of application. So now, because you need to develop, you need to have skills. You understand? You need to have skills. Give me that in Sarak 1. You must have skills. You must develop skills. Okay, Sarak 1 verse 19. Ecclesiastes, the one verse 19. Uh -huh. Wisdom raineth down skill and knowledge of understanding. You see what wisdom does? Wisdom is going to rain down skill. Wisdom of the most, the wisdom of the most high God is going to give you skill. It's going to give you skills. When you do examination, you're going to see that the skills that you lack and the laws of God will help you to what? To develop those skills. Self-improvement. So that you're not stagnant. You are progressive you are, and productive. You understand? Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 19. Read. Wisdom raineth down skill and knowledge of understanding mm -hmm. and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. So now wisdom is going to give you skill. Wisdom is when you apply the laws of God. You're going to get your wisdom through application. That wisdom that you get it through your application is going to give you skills. You understand? Because a lot of a lot of you, yes, you study the scriptures, you have your fringes and a ball of blue, you go to camp, but you you are you don't have skills, you lack skills. You don't know you you, you don't know how your, your speech is 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 incorrect. You don't know how to talk. And I'm not talking about you know being eloquent in English. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about bedside manners. You don't know how to talk to others. Watch this. Give me Sirach 32 verse 7. Because a lot of you young men, very disrespectful. Because some of you, not all of you, some of you, when I talk to you, you always want to interrupt. Why? Because you have poor bed, bedside manners. You don't know how to talk to elders. That lets me know that you don't respect your mother and father. You disrespect them. And you think you can bring the same spirit of disrespect up in here. That will not happen. That's not going to happen. We're building a nation here. And you, those are the type of skills that you must have. These are soft skills. Okay. Give me Sarah 32 verse 7. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 32 verse 7. Come on. Speak, young man, mm -hmm. if there be need of thee. Read. And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. You see what the Lord is saying? Is a speak young man if there be need of thee. Because as a young man, there's no need for you to speak because you just came out of your mother's behind. So it says, there's no need for you to speak. Speak young man, if there be need of you, if there's a need for you to speak, yet scarcely when thou art twice asked because hardly you are going to be asked. You understand? Go ahead, verse eight, read. Verse 8. You know what? Mm, Let thy speech. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Before we get to verse 8, hold this. Give me Proverbs 1. Give me Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. It says, Speak, young men, if they be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Meaning, we have you have to ask, you have you have to be asked twice. So you can say, Oh, yeah, no, they are talking to me now. So I can say something. But most of the time, nobody's gonna ask you for nothing. Why? Because your job is to gather those instructions. Proverbs 1 verse 2. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 2. Go ahead. To know wisdom and instruction. Mm -hmm. To perceive the words of understanding. So in order for you to know wisdom and instruction, 
to perceive the words of understanding, guess what needs to happen? Read on. To receive the instruction of wisdom, mm -hmm. justice, and judgment, and equity. Read. To give subtlety to the simple. Stop right there. The reason why you're supposed to know wisdom and instruction, you understand? Justice, judgment, and equity is so that you can receive subtlety because you are simple-minded. To give subtlety to the simple. Next part of that verse. Watch this. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. That's why you must you get that's that's the reason why it says speak, young man, if there be need of thee. Because there's no need for you to speak. Why? Because your job is gathering instructions so you can receive subtlety for your simple simplicity. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. Because young men don't have knowledge, neither do they have discretion. So when you come in, your job is to learn, re sponge, be like a sponge. You understand? Come on, verse, uh, read verse 4 again. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 4. Mm -hmm. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Go back to Sarak now, 32 verse 8 now. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 32 verse 8. Let thy speech be short. Mm -hmm. Comprehending much in few words. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. So he's not saying that you know. He says, be as, be as one that knoweth and holdeth his tongue. So he's saying, let thy speech be short. That's why a lot of you have taught you before, but some of you are applying it. You're not, you're not, you're not long-winded with things. Because sometimes when I ask you, a lot of the times I ask you questions, when you give answer, just keep it short. Because when you start adding spices and sugars, there's sin involved in that thing. That's why it says, let thy speech be short. Because what are you going to say? Comprehending much in few words. What's the much? The instructions that you are receiving. The instructions that you are given. Okay, come on. Verse 9. Watch this. Verse 9. If thou be among great men, Make not thyself equal with them. Stop right there. The reason why you're supposed to learn knowledge and discretion is so that when you're among great men, you don't make yourself equal with them. So some of you, you try to make yourself equal with those that came before you in this tool. That's disrespectful. Because that's the spirit I'm seeing today in the world with, with, with sons, young men, wanting to make themselves equal with the older men. We see it a lot in the, in the world but you wanna bring the same spirit up in here. That's not gonna happen. Why? Because we are building a nation because we must be in order. We must be well ordered. You understand? I take no prisoners when it comes to that. Why? Because for too long, we've been in the world acting like Negroes and duckies. Them days are over. You understand? Those days are over. Now you are in the truth, you must apply. If you don't wanna apply, no problem, goodbye. Keep it moving. The Lord will send more laborers that are going to do this thing. Read that again, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 9. Come on. If thou be among great men, mm -hmm. make not thyself equal with them. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. That's why in verse 8 it says, let thy speech be short, because ancient men are in place. Use not many words. Because your job is to do what? To be quiet and listen. Receive those instructions. Then let, don't let the discourse of the wise escape you. You must make sure that you acquaint yourself with their proverbs. Their wise sayings. You understand? Watch this. Give me, let's get some examples. Give me Daniel 1 verse 4. Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. Daniel was a young man. Watch this. Our forefather Daniel. Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom. You see that thing? And there cunning was in Hold knowledge. On. Wait, wait, wait. It says, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom. Remember we read in Sirach 1 verse 19, it says, wisdom reigneth down skill. Because they were gathering instruction from their youth, they were able to receive skill. That skill allowed them to stand before kings. 
This was Nebuchadnezzar at this point. Read that part again, verse 4. Daniel chapter 1, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Children in whom was no blemish. Read. But well favored and skillful in all wisdom. Mm -hmm. And cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. Stop right there. It says, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. You know what it means to stand in the king's palace? That means Daniel, he had etiquette. He had good bedside manners. You understand? He wasn't running his mouth, trying to make himself equal with the king. No. Because of his wisdom, because he had a good spirit in him, he was applying, he was following instruction. He was able to stand in the king's palace. What does that mean, stand in the king's palace? He was advising the king. You know what? You, you can't be going, you cannot appear before the king wearing jeans that are torn, barki fashion. No, no, no. No, you can't be dressed like that. You must dress properly. You understand? Be well grooming. Comb your hair, put, put lazarin on your hair, moisturize your hair, put some uh, cologne on, smell good, iron your clothes, bath. You understand? Look, look, look proper. We need to look like royalty because we are royalty. You understand? We must look like that. Read that thing again. It says, and such as had ability to do what? Read that part again. And such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. Mm -hmm. And whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Because they knew the tongues of the Chaldeans. Watch this. Give me Daniel chapter 5 verse 11. Daniel 5 verse 11. Daniel chapter 5 is 11. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. You and know what? The days... mm. Wait, wait, wait. You know what? Let's start with this. Give me history of Susanna 1, verse 45. In the Apocrypha, history of Susanna chapter 1, verse 45. Watch this. History of Susanna, chapter 1, verse 45. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when she was led to be put to death, That's Susanna. The, Lord, the Lord raised up the Holy Spirit of a young youth. Of a what? Whose name, of a young youth. Of a young youth. The Lord raised up the Holy Spirit of a young youth because he was gathering instruction from his youth. Go ahead. Of a young youth whose name was Daniel. Now read verse 64. Watch this. Verse 64. Mm -hmm. From that day forth was Daniel had in great reputation in the sight of the people. Because guess what? Daniel from his young youth, he was gathering instruction. So now when it come time for the Lord to raise his spirit, guess what? When he judged the matter because these two men these two elders wanted to kill the sister. You understand? So now, after he judged the matter righteously, guess what? Daniel had great reputation in the sight of the people. From that time, Daniel had that reputation, even unto his old age, when, he, when the Lord was showing him all those visions. Watch this. Now Daniel 5, verse 11. Daniel chapter 5, verse 11. Mm -hmm. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the unholy gods? No, no, oh. no, no, no. Read verse 11 again. Now this is, this is now, this time has passed now. Daniel is in Babylon. Now they say there's a, there, there's a man in thy kingdom. Let's talk about Daniel. Because remember in, the, in Susanna, Daniel had a great reputation among the people. Now he was, and so much so that he was able to stand in the king's palace, like we read in Daniel 1. Okay, come on. Daniel 5 verse 11 again. Daniel chapter 5 verse 11. Mm -hmm. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light 
and understanding and wisdom. Like the wisdom of the gods was found in him, whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, mm -hmm. Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Read on. These was the advisors now. This is Belshazzar. This is Nebuchadnezzar's grandson. Go ahead. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hot sentences and dissolving of doubts mm -hmm. were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. You see that thing? Daniel is a now let Daniel come. Is a now Dan let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs. We're coming back here. Proverbs. I'm going to show you, because Daniel, he was what? He was able to, he, he received instruction in his youth, and he was what? He was taught subtlety and discretion. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. They will attain unto wise counsels. Come on. To understand a proverb mm -hmm. and the interpretation, the words of the wise and they are dark sayings. You see what he said? To understand a proverb and the interpretation. Daniel understood proverbs and interpretation of those proverbs and their dark sayings. He understood that. Why? Because he gathered instruction in his youth. He was given subtlety. You understand? Knowledge and discretion. So go back to Daniel chapter 5. Read verse 13 now. Daniel chapter 5 verse 13. Mm-hmm. Then was Daniel brought in before the king. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, mm -hmm. whom the king, my father, brought out of Jewry? You see that thing? So Belteshazzar knew that we are in slavery. Likewise, today we are in captivity. And while our forefathers in captivity, they were not bums. They were not bums. You understand? They had good names, even in captivity. So you cannot use captivity as an excuse because Daniel was able to stand before Nebuchadnezzar and before his grandson too. Go ahead. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. You see that thing? It says... What it says, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Because Daniel, he had wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And he had what? Discretion. So Daniel had etiquette. He, he, had, bad, he had good bedside manners. Grooming. You understand? That's what you young men, I'm trying to instill in each and every one of you. So that the same spirit that was in Daniel, you can have the same spirit as well. You understand? Watch this. Now, here's another thing. Because your speech, your speech must be proper. You must know how to, how to speak. You cannot be standing before kings. You're standing before the leadership. You're talking like you're talking to your, your friend that you met in high school. That's not going to happen. You will not go home and be talking back to your father and mother. That's not going to happen. You will be kicked out of the camp, disrespecting your parents, even if they are not in the truth. But you must not disrespect them. The fact that you can, you think you can want to interrupt when I'm talking to you, guess what? That's not going to happen here. You will lose your rank. Why? Because you can, the rank you get it because of what? Your understanding of the scriptures and your application of the scriptures. That's why you see at the example of our forefathers, Daniel and them, they were in order because they gathered those instructions. They did not let the parables of understanding escape them. Now, another thing is that young men, you have to what? You need to be clean. 
Hygiene must be top of mind. You must not be smelling bad. You have bad breath. You don't brush your teeth. You don't use you don't use floss. You don't floss your gums and all of that. You've got plaque in your gums because you don't take care of yourself. So you are unhygienic. You don't have good hygiene practices. You don't have good hygiene habits. We're gonna deal with that. Give me that in Leviticus 15, verse 1. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord speak unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, You know what? Speak. Hmm. Hold on. Wait, before we get that, give me Matthew 6, verse 17 first. Matthew 6, verse 17. Let's start there. Matthew chapter 6, verse 17. Go ahead. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. So now it says when you fast, because right now we are on a fast as a congregation, monthly fast that we have. It says, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. Meaning what? Don't look homeless. You are on a fast. You understand? You don't bath. You don't put lotion on. You don't comb your hair. You don't comb your beard. You just look like a ragamuffin. No. That's what Christ is. Read that again. Verse 17. Matthew chapter 6, verse 17. Mm -hmm. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. Meaning wash your face. Meaning what? You must bath. Clean yourself up. Go ahead. That thou appear not unto men to fast. That you don't appear unto men to fast like you are fasting. Read on. But unto thy father, which is in secret. Mm -hmm. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. You see that thing? So now, the key I wanted to deal with is verse 17 when it says, anoint thine head. Meaning what? Comb your hair. You understand? Whether you have brush or you have a afronyana, that's fine. Comb it. Put low, put, put, moisturize your hair. You understand? It mustn't look dry, you know, look like a wet dog. Okay? And wash your face. Watch this. Now, give me Leviticus 15 and 1. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord speak unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue, because of his issue, he is unclean. So now this running issue is going into what? Diarrhea. That's what he's going into. Diarrhea. It says, if a man has a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue, he is unclean. This now goes into what? Remember now, this was during that time, but it also applies to today in this sense. A running issue out of your flesh, that goes into your diarrhea and all of that. Some of you, you'll be wearing underwear for three days. You don't change the thing. You don't wash your underwear. Some of you, you actually have underwear as laundry. I don't get that. How do you have underwear as laundry? You check your laundry, there's underwear in there. How did that happen? So that means you wear your underwear when you bath, you don't wash it. No, you must wash that thing. You're, you're in your laundry, there must not be underwear up in there. So who's gonna, you're gonna touch the same underwear with the running issue. Are you kidding? What the hell is this? Read that thing again, verse 2. Today Leviticus is your day. Read that thing again. The hell is this? Leviticus chapter 15, verse 2. Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel and mm -hmm. say unto them, When any man had the running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue, he is unclean. You are unclean. You are untidy. You see that thing? You are filthy. So you cannot have underwear as laundry. No. Your underwear cannot be part of laundry. You must be washing it on a day. Even if you are changing this, and you are, because you are changing the underwears, you must make sure that you wash them. When it's time for laundry, there must not be underwears up in there. No. Keep going. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue. This shall be what? 
and this shall be his uncleanness in his issue and this shall be his uncleanness in his issue because guess what you wear underwear for two three days you don't change the underwear that means you don't wash your bum because some brothers don't wash some brothers don't want to wash so now you are married you want your your wife to go down on you but your bum is unclean are you kidding no that will not be acceptable in Israel. Not as soldiers of Christ, we're not going to accept that thing. That thing will be unacceptable. You understand? Read. Whether his flesh run with his issue, mm -hmm. or his flesh be stopped from his issue, it is unclean. It is it, his he, uncleanness. He, it is his uncleanness, meaning what? You are filthy. You must wash your behind. You must wash your underwear. You understand? You must wipe your behind properly. Because some brothers don't know how to do that. Go ahead. Every bed whereon he lieth that had the issue is mm -hmm. unclean. You see that thing? So even where you sleep, because if you don't wash your underwear, that means your bum is unclean. That means your bum is not clean properly. So guess what? Even your bed, your bed sheet, ingubo, and all of that, they are also unclean. You are untidy. Okay, come on. Verse 5. And whosoever toucheth his no, bed. No. no, read verse 4 again. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 4. Go ahead. Every bed whereon he lieth that hath the issue is unclean. And everything whereon he sitteth shall be unclean. And is you see that thing? And everything whereon he sitteth shall be unclean. Go ahead. Verse 5. And whosoever toucheth his bed shall wash his clothes mm. and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. So now imagine now, now here you are, you are married. Okay, because you some of you brothers you want to get married. Okay. It says, now, because imagine your wife has to wash that. Your wife has to be washing your unclean, dirty underwears. I mean, you have to, before you can even get married, those are the things that you need to know how to get right. Personal hygiene. You must make sure that you know how to do stuff like that. You understand? To clean yourself up so that you don't have order. You don't, your, your balls don't smell. Smelly ball syndrome because you don't wash yourself. You don't wipe yourself correctly. Your underwear is unclean. It's part of the laundry. Mm -mm. No. Go ahead. And he that sitteth on anything whereon he sat that had the issue shall wash his clothes mm. and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. So now it says, it says, and he that sitteth, it says, and he that sitteth on anything whereon he said that had the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. So now let's use something simple as your bed sheets as an example. Even your clothes, your pants, your underwear, and all of that. Those things must be washed. Personal hygiene, very important, that thing. Go ahead. And he that touched the flesh of him that had mm -hmm. the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Come on. And if he that had the issue spit upon him that is clean. Hold on. Wait, then, wait. Um, read verse 7 again for me. Read verse 7 once again. Leviticus chapter 15 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And he that touched the flesh of him that had the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. So now imagine this, the person that touches you, that, that they are the ones that must wash themselves, wash their clothes, in, wash themselves and be un, so they can be unclean until the evening. Guess what? What about the person that is going through that having the issue? Because the issue now is just an example now. Because the issue, it does not necessarily have to be, have, be diarrhea, but it can be order. Meaning you are, you, 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 that funky smell, when you, you understand? 
that funky smell that is between your legs, you don't wash it. There's this order that the stench, it doesn't go away. You are not doing anything to get rid of that smell. You understand? Now you're going to want your wife to lick your balls. Are you kidding me? No, no. Mm -mm. You must prepare. You must fix that thing first before you get married. You understand? Verse 8. Watch this. Verse 8. And if he that had the issue spits on him that is clean. Stop right there. Then it says, if he that had the issue spit on him that is clean. So now the issue is, the issue here is obviously is running issue. But this also goes into just personal uncleanness period also. It, it goes into that now. So imagine now, it says, and if he that had the issue spit on him that is clean. So let's look at this now. Here you are, you see brothers, no, 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 let's deal with dental hygiene. Dental hygiene. You don't brush your teeth regularly. You don't brush your teeth morning and evening. Before you sleep, you don't brush your teeth. You don't have a floss. You don't have a, what do they call it? You know, this Listerine mouthwash and all that. You understand? So imagine you, you, if you had to spit on somebody and you don't brush your teeth regularly, you don't use floss to get rid of those, the, the bacteria between your teeth and in your gums. Could you imagine the level of filth that would be on that person? What, what about the breath? That means you have bad breath. You understand? Like hot vomit coming out of your mouth. That's unclean. Guess what needs to happen? These are things that men, you need to learn how to do. You understand? You must learn how to do that stuff. Go ahead. Then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. Come on, next verse. Verse 9. And what saddle soever he rideth upon that hath the issue shall be unclean. So now imagine, right? It says, and what, what saddle so the saddle is talking about a horse. Now you are going to ride a you, go, you are going to now ride a horse. It says, and what saddle soever he rideth upon that had the issue shall be unclean. So now imagine you sitting on your wife. You don't wash yourself. You have, you have, you have order. You don't wash between your legs. What's going to happen? So these are things we need to think about and fix. Okay, go ahead. And whosoever touches anything that was under him shall be unclean until the evening. Stop right there. It says, and whosoever touches anything that was under him, under him, under where? Your pants. Because they're also going to have some kind of smell. That's what we're reading. It says, and whosoever touches anything that was under him, that will be your underwear as an example. So now you throw that thing in the, in the, in the washing basket so that farmer is mixing with your t-shirt for cam. You can't make this stuff up. Go ahead. And he that buried any of those things shall wash his clothes mm -hmm. and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. You see that thing? And bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Go ahead. Verse 11. And whosoever mm -hmm. he touches that hath the issue and has not risked his hands in water, he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Because some people, they go to the bathroom, they deal, they do their business, they don't wash their hands. They be shaking brother's hands. You, I mean, listen, this is basic stuff, personal hygiene. And some people, you know what they do? You know, this public, when you go to maybe public restaurants, you go to the mall and stuff like that. You want to go to the last, the last bathroom that's, that's, that's at the corner. You want to go to that one. You know, that's the, that's the filthiest one, by the way, because everybody wants to run to that place. The first one is the most clean one, by the way. The first one is you walk in, that first bathroom, that's the cleanest one. 
but you want to choose to go to the last one, the least unclean one, you go to that one. Okay, jump down to verse 13. Watch this. This is the solution to what we just read. To the person that has the issue, the issue of uncleanness, whatever, whatsoever that uncleanness it is. Read verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. And when he that had the, an issue is cleansed of his issue. Is what? Is cleansed of his issue. So he that has the issue is cleansed of his issue, meaning what? Wash your behind. Go ahead. Then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing mm -hmm. and wash his clothes Read. and bathe his flesh in running water and shall be clean. You see that thing? And bathe himself in, and bathe his flesh in running water and shall be clean. So man, meaning what? You must bath, okay? Morning and evening, you must bath. In the morning and in the evening, you have to wash your behind. You understand? You must do that thing. That's something that you must practice and exercise on a daily basis. Watch this. Give me Exodus 30 verse 18. Watch this. Exodus chapter 30 verse 18. Hmm. Exodus chapter 30 verse 18. Go ahead. Thou shalt start also... A, start of a 17. Exodus 30 verse 17. Exodus chapter 30 verse 17. Go ahead. And the Lord speak unto Moses saying, mm -hmm. Thou shalt also make a lever of brass and his foot also of brass mm -hmm. to wash with all. To do what? To wash with all. To wash with all. So this lever of brass was for washing. Go ahead. To wash with all, and thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation Go ahead. and the altar. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt put the water therein. You shall put water therein. Read on. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. That's why it says with all in verse 18. They shall wash their hands and their feet. Read. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation. When they what? When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation. So this was for Aaron and his sons. So this goes into the men. You understand? Because, yes, it was talking about the Levites, but it also goes into all Israel. Okay, read. In these last days. Come on. They shall wash with water. Mm -hmm. That they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. So now the sacrifices, remember now we are offering up spiritual sacrifices. One of those offerings is what? Hygiene, personal hygiene. So now it says, it says what? It says when they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, meaning they must wash, they shall wash with water. Now you are coming into Israel now. You were in the Christian church, in Islam, in Egyptology, democracy, whatever, politics. Now you are coming in Israel. Guess what you must do? You must learn how to wash. Bathe yourself. Be clean. You understand? Watch this. Jump up, jump down. Jump up to verse. Read verse 22 now. Exodus. Now, now, now that you've, you, you know how to what? Personal hygiene. You must, you must be clean. You must be tidy. You understand? Next thing is you, you know how to wash yourself and all of that. Very important, you understand, to get rid of the odor. Very important stuff. Now you also must do what? You must perfume yourself. You must smell good. That's the law, by the way. Read that. Exodus 30 verse 22. Exodus chapter 30 verse 22. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices mm -hmm. of pure myrrh, mm. 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, mm -hmm. even 250 shekels, and of sweet ca calamus, 250 shekels. So now you've got myrrh, you've got cinnamon, you've got calamus. These are spices, right? They, they smell good. Go ahead. And of Keisha, 500 shekels. Mm -hmm. After the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, and hen. 
So now you've got cassia and you've got olive oil. Go ahead. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy, of holy ointment. Mm -hmm. An ointment compound of the art of the apothecary. Come on. It, it shall be an holy anointing oil. So the apothecary is somebody that makes perfume. An apothecary is somebody that makes perfume. So he's telling the he's telling um he's telling Moses to teach the sons of Aaron to do this thing, to create, to make perfume. You understand? And he's giving them the ingredients to make that perfume. It says it shall be an holy anointing oil. So it smells good. So guess what? Likewise, after you bath yourself. You need to be able to anoint yourself with these with these type of oil so you can smell good. You understand? Don't be smelling like a wet cat. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to verse 30. Read that. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they minister unto me in the priest's office. You see what he's saying? Aaron and his sons. That goes into the men. Go ahead. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Throughout your generations. Meaning what? Anoint yourself with, with you, must, you must perfume yourself. You must smell good as a man. Because this is to the sons here. Yeah. Okay, come on. Upon, a ma upon man's flesh shall it mm -hmm. be poured. You see that thing? Upon whoa, 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 whoa. Read that part again, verse 32. Exodus chapter 30, verse 32. Mm -hmm. Upon man's flesh Upon shall it not what? be poured. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. Watch this. Go ahead. Neither shall ye make any other like it. Mm -hmm. After the composition of it, it is holy and shall be holy unto you. So now you see this thing. Remember, it says he shall, he, they shall anoint. He says, let's see. Let, let, let me show you what it means. Jump back up. Okay. Jump back up to verse. Mm, uh, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, read verse 30. Read verse 30 again. Exodus chapter 30, verse 30. Go ahead. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they minister unto me in the priest's office. You see that thing? You shall anoint Aaron and his sons. You understand? That you shall anoint Aaron and his sons. How did he anoint Aaron and his sons? He, he poured the oil unto them. Go ahead. So go, guess what? It goes into us today. He's not just talking about Aaron and his sons. You understand? Read. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Read. Upon men's flesh shall it not be poured. Mm -hmm. Neither shall ye make any other like it. After the composition of it, it is holy and shall be holy unto you. So when he says upon man's flesh, he's talking about those that were outside of the, the priesthood. You understand? He says it shall not be poured. When he says it's upon man's flesh, it shall not be poured. He's not talking about the sons of Aaron. You understand? He's not talking about the sons of Aaron. He's talking about those. He's, he's talking about the people that were not dealing with the priest office. I'll prove it. Give me that in Psalms 133 verse 1. You understand? But in these last days, it's going into all Israel. And guess what? It doesn't mean that Israel didn't smell good. No, it don't mean that. We're going we're gonna to read that. Watch this. Give me Psalms 133 verse 1. Psalms chapter 133 verse 1. Go ahead. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Read. It is like the precious ointment upon the head. Upon the what? It is like the precious ointment upon the head. 
upon the hay. Is that not man's flesh? Yeah, that is man's flesh. So what was he talking about? He was talking about those that were outside of the priesthood. You understand? Go ahead. That ran down upon the beard. Mm -hmm. Even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. So now this oil, it smelled good. So much so it even touched the garment. So that gum, the garment also smelled good. But now he is using the, this holy anointing oil that we read the ingredients of it. You understand? Is likening, is likening it to the unity of the brethren. Because when you keep God's commandments in the spirit of Christ, it's like that oil that ran from Aaron's head to his beard and to his garments. So guess what? He's also talking about all Israel, not just the sons of Aaron. Understand that? Let's go back to Exodus 30. Okay, Exodus chapter 30 and verse 32 again. Exodus chapter 30 verse 32. Mm -hmm. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. Neither shall ye make any other like it. Mm -hmm. After the composition of it, it is holy and it shall be holy unto you. Now jump down to verse 34. Watch, you read verse 33. Watch this. Verse 33. Whosoever compounded, compounded any like it, or whosoever put it, any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off from his people. So the stranger it, it is going into what? The other nations. You understand? It was also going into the, the nation of Israel that were, that were stranger to the what? To the priesthood. You understand? But it doesn't mean that the nation of Israel were not commanded to be, um, to, to, be, to be clean. You understand? Although we read in Leviticus, it wasn't just for the priest. It was for all Israel. But the priest had specific offices that they was dealing with for all Israel. Okay, read verse 34. Come on. Verse 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Mm -hmm. Take unto thee sweet spices, stacte, and mm -hmm. onica, red, and, and galbanum. galbanum. Mm -hmm. And these, these sweet spices with pure frankincense. Come on. Of each shall they be a like weight. So now the Lord is commanded. Remember now, he's, he, 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 we just go through reading that they must wash, they must anoint themselves with perfume, they must smell good. Okay, now the Lord is going to command Moses that another perfume must be made. Watch this. Go ahead. And thou shalt make it a perfume. Thou shalt what? And thou shalt make it a perfume. Thou shalt make it a perfume. Read on. A confection after the art of the apothecary. Mm. Tempered together, pure and holy. You see that thing tempered together, pure and holy. Now watch this. Read on. Verse 36. And thou shalt beat some of it very small. Mm -hmm. And put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation. In the congregation. So it they call, where with that, now this right here is where the Mosa is gonna pay a visit to the high priest. You understand? So even the, the, where the Lord, the holies of all, where the Lord came to pay a visit between the cherubims, you understand, on the Ark of the Covenant, it, it was smelling good. You understand? Read. Where, where I will meet with thee, mm -hmm. it shall be unto you most holy. Most holy. Where I will meet with thee, it shall be unto you most holy. Go ahead. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, Mm -hmm. Ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. Read. It shall be unto thee, for it shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. Because this was only for what? For the holies of all. But the temple is no longer standing right now. The temple is, we are the temple. So guess what? We can make this now for our, for us. That's why we can make perfume. So guess what? If you cannot make perfume, Go to the shops and buy one so you can smell good. Stop smelling like a dead raccoon. Go ahead. Verse 38. Go ahead. Whosoever shall make like that, like unto that, to smell thereto, shall even be cut off from his people. 
So now, this was because the temple was standing where the Lord will come into the holies of all on the day of atonement, you understand, between the two cherubims where the Lord will meet the high priest in there. You understand? So what I'm showing you is that the Lord required us to wash, to be clean, to, to have personal hygiene, and to smell good. Even where the Lord visited, the most High God wanted to also make sure that the tabernacle also is clean, is hygiene, it smells good. You understand? Because the, it, this is letting you know that the most High God has got style. The most High God he got style. He dresses well. You understand? He gave us a fashion. He gave us how to dress. You must, you must bath, you must dress nice, you must smell good. Guess what? Likewise, you brothers, the same thing must apply to all of us, what we just read. Understand that? Yes, sir. All praises. Now, here's another thing. We're moving away from that now. Watch this. Now, here's another thing, right? Hmm... Let me wait, 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 wait. Let me see something. Let me see something real quick. You know what? I don't think I'm going to finish this class. Okay. I don't think I'm going to finish the class. So um, I'll do this as part one. This is part one. Okay. This will definitely be part one. This will be part one. Okay. This will definitely be part one. I'm going to end the class right here. Okay. I'm going to end the class right here. Give me the book. Give me the book of uh, Proverbs. Watch this. I still want to just visit that hygiene thing. Okay. Give me Proverbs 7. Now, you know what? Give me Sarak 7, 20, Sarak 7, 26 first. Sarak 7, verse 26. Watch how this comes together. Sarak chapter 7, verse 26. Watch this. Mm. Oh, praise to the Most High. Read that thing. Ecclesia. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 26. Come on. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Mm -hmm. Forsake her not. Read. But give not thyself over to a light woman. So now he says, do you have a wife after your mind? Your wife must be, your wife, her mind must be a mirror image of yours. Because your mind is after the Lord. Her mind is after you. After your mind. So it says, Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a dumb woman. That's what a light woman is. Now watch this. Give me Sarah 25 and 1. Hmm. Sarah 25 verse 1. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 25 verse 1. Come on. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and man. Mm hmm. The unity of brethren. Read. The love of neighbors. Mm -hmm. A man and a wife that agree together. A man and a wife that agree together. Because the wife's mind must be after their husband's mind. You see this thing right here? Now watch this. Because of that, give me Proverbs now. This is how the wife going to know how to do this. Because the man knows how to do it. And he taught his wife how to do it. Watch this. That's when this comes together, when it says a man and a wife that agree together. They agree together on what? This is what the scriptures say. Give me Proverbs chapter 7, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 16. Mm -hmm. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry. Come on. With carved works. With fine linen of Egypt. So now is the fine linen of Egypt, the best garments. But what I want to show you here is that it says, I have decked my bed. I've decorated my bed with coverings of tapestry. Bedding is proper, okay? With carved work, with fine linen of Egypt. So the wife is going to know how to get this stuff because the husband is teaching it. You understand? This man is, this brother is teaching his wife what, how he wants things to be set up. The wife will know and the wife will teach the children. The wife will teach other women in the congregation how to deal with that personal eye hygiene thing. You understand that? Read on. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, mm. aloes, and cinnamon. So now he says, she's, this is the woman speaking. He says, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. That means the bed sheets, they, what, they smell good. 
they get changed every day. New bed sheets every day. You, you, you don't go into bed with your, with your unclean bum because you know how to be hygienic. You wash your behind. You go into clean sheets that are perfumed. They smell good. Because they soft. Hmm? Stuff like that. You understand? Then those things are compatible with a good night's sleep. Read that thing again. Verse 17. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 17. Go ahead. I perfume my bed with mm. myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Now, now that you've done that, you, you and your wife go into your bedroom. You go into those sheets that smell good, that get changed on a daily basis. Next verse. Watch this. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Mm. Let, us, let us solace ourselves with loves. So now imagine, he says, he says come, let us fill our, let, let us, he says, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. He, here, imagine you go into the bedroom, you go into the bed, the sheets are unclean, the sheets don't get washed on a daily, they smell, mm. and then now you go in there to deal with your wife sexually. I mean, come on, bro. You see this thing? So each one teach one. That's how we build a nation. We must deal with these uncomfortable topics. Now, I'm going to end the class right here. This is part one. I'm going to deal with part two on the more Lord's will. Okay, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 11, verse 23. Let's read that. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Mm -hmm. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 